Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. What's going on, buddy? Good hey, to Greg. see you. It's fun to see you last night, too. Wait, are we on yet? Yes. Oh, that's great that we opened up right on. <laughs> right on you, Puffin. <laughs> oh, last night was fun. Oh, my How God. How funny dude. was it tell, dude? I was remembering today that he said that uh, Deliverance was his Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> he said so many asides like that. There was so yeah. many. Like, you know, Tony said something really funny. He said, you, you watch him, you die laughing. And then afterwards, you can't remember anything he said. No, that's right. And then I start to have recall. It's like I got abducted and then the memories come back. <laughs> <laughs> so when I woke up, I was laughing because I remembered he said, he said, <laughs> Well, about he he goes. I need to get a root canal, but I I couldn't get it. Guys, I couldn't get a root canal because I was in Oklahoma. You know, every life is sacred. <laughs> Did you ever have a back alley root canal? <laughs> he was just everything about him was just so silly and so casual. It was very very. And when he pulls out the recorder and starts playing that little flute thing, yeah, he learned to do that over the pandemic. Uh... He learned to play <laughs> recorder. <laughs> the fact that he uses a flip phone for real. I guess he has. You want some coffee? Yeah. I guess he I has guess I have asked. a um, uh, iPhone that he uses for social media when he. If he I ever was, I was want to send post. him shit, and I can't because he's a. I guess he's taking the calls on the flip phone. Yeah, yeah. He he prefers to be out. Does with he the work flip for Mossad? <laughs> <laughs> I think he prefers to be with the flip phone, but yeah. I think he's right. I think he's right. I think if you have a cell phone that's like connected to the internet, a smartphone, but you don't use it that often, every now and then you check it, that's probably the way to go. You know, we, of course he's right. Yeah. Everybody has North Korea in their pocket at all times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you really do. Well, I, Our government, their government, everybody's government. You better hope it's multiple governments so there's at least some competition for your data and it's not just one monopoly has all your data. Right. Have you, how much have you paid attention to the TikTok thing? Where they're trying to do this ban on TikTok? Too much because we covered it. And uh, we, uh, it's, it's because, well, here's what it's, besides controlling and being able to take shit down whenever they want and doing, we're Which China. Which is a real problem. Yeah, we are China, by the way. I don't know if people think we're not China, but we are China. And, uh, but now uh, the real push was coming uh, because of uh, Israel, not because of, uh, you know, the, all the Hamas videos or whatever, but Israelis post shit. Uh, TikTok censors people. TikTok's not like a free speech something platform. Right. So the shit Israeli soldiers are posting themselves is getting out. And what happens is the kids are on TikTok and, you know, uh, it, it hasn't been 1944 forever. It's been pretty woke here. So now that's clashing, seeing, seeing this shit that... You know, remember Osama bin Laden made a huge comeback, like about a I don't know how many months ago. Oh right, right, right. And Le- people just discovered his letters. Letter to America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God, he makes sense. I think he's an industry plant. There. So, what are these Israeli soldiers uh, putting up on TikTok? Well, all the all the war crimes that they do. At that. no. Look, I really? would. Ne- I want to make this clear to everyone. I would never listen to an Arab. Okay, so I want you to understand that I would never believe a Muslim about nothing. You don't have to ever do that. Look at, not America what they tell you, Israeli news, Israeli politicians, their ambassadors when they come here and talk, listen to what they say. Because that's what I unfortunately did and it was quite disturbing. And what's even more disturbing is when I tell my friends here in America, they go, yeah, no, they got war. Nagasaki, Hiroshima, right? You've heard, you've heard right. the old Nagasaki, Hiroshima? Yeah, uh, and the I, old I, Kid Rock combo. Yeah, the old kid. <laughs> Dresden. Okay, this is like how naive I am. Uh, Jimmy was putting up, because I could see the stories ready, loading up for the, whatever, the next segment. And I see Israeli ambassador in uh, UK, Dresden. So what I think it's going to be is she's going, how dare you compare what we're doing to Dresden? We're defending ourselves. Okay, that's what I think. You know, the, what a normal human would do is go, I would want, never want to say Dresden is okay. Did you ever read Slaughterhouse, uh, 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 Kurt Vonnegut? We had to read the book in school because he was at Dresden, Kurt Vonnegut. And it was a deliberate terror attack that we did with, and this is just established history. It's a crime, but you know, we were fighting the Nazis, et cetera. So, and we won. So, okay, that's how I thought we looked at it. Like it was a terrible crime, but she goes, yeah, you know, Dresden, we got to do Dresden. 
Explain Dresden, what ha- what took place at Dresden for people that might not know. I don't remember what city it was. We firebombed them. Firebombed the entire city. Yeah, indiscriminately uh, killed everybody. No, 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 not indiscriminately. On purpose, targeted civilians to break their spirit. But keep in mind, Dresden, as much of a, it's a crime, but that was like the wars going on and on. So then they started doing shit like Dresden. Evil shit. We didn't do Hiroshima the week two of the war. Right, right. Was Dresden? Why was Dresden so heavily bombed? This is all the known. The punishing too. three-day Allied bombing attack intended to force a German surrender leveled the city and left tens of thousands dead. And probably more than that, by the way. It's, look, I thought everybody knew it was a war crime, and actually everybody did know up until, like, you know, people thought natural immunity was a thing until a couple years ago. Yeah, that's this is one of those. So I'm disturbed by that. So she was essentially saying we have to commit a war crime, right? Or we're doing a war crime because in, in Gaza. her brain it's 1944 all day. Gnome, Gnome from the cellar pointed out this mindset, and, and it's very insightful, because not 1948, when you got Israel established, it's 44, right after this shit happened, and you're real mad. They live in 1940, but we lived in wokey times. So the clash between the cultures, it, every time I hear an Israeli official or military person or fucking Bibi speak, it sounds like someone's embarrassing immigrant parent that doesn't know not to say gay slurs here in America. Like, <laughs> Every time. So, again, I do not support Hamas or any Arab or Muslim. I hope I make it clear I'm one of the good people. And like the good people, I yearn for us to go back and fight them. You remember back when that was already me, when we knew what was what, before we went to all this cuckoo caca? <laughs> I hope we go back to those days. In fact, if I was liberal, I'd also hope that the Obama times, that was so great. <laughs> yeah. The, the times of a not less, con- either. less confusing enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was more clearly established what was going on. Um, this whole... Dave Smith knows shit, by the way, when you have... You probably had him recently, right? Yeah. He, no, that, Dave's the best at Dave it. knows... I'm, I'm very proud of Dave consistently because he really knows his shit. Like, he doesn't talk about things unless he knows his things, and he goes very, very deep into subjects. He doesn't talk out of his ass at all. No, not at all, goes, dude. No, he not goes at very, all. very deep into subjects, really gets an understanding of them, and then fucking debates people and really knows what he's talking about. Like he, yes, he's he actually does. contributes to these conversations in a very, yep. very meaningful way. I know him a long time, dude. I'm very impressed with him right now. He's very impressive. He's very impressive. He's, uh, and he's hilarious, too. It's like he's both things. Hilarious comic and um, very impressive person. You see on Piers Morgan? Yeah, I did see that. So my buddy Gary from Neurotic went on Piers Morgan to, with, uh, I can't remember the other guy, the critical drinker, and then these two chicks from, one was English, and it was on Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan is, is getting like the YouTube talent pool of whatever to, to come on and debate these topics. Like he discovered all this. Right. And it's like, are the, are the Oscars over? Or are the Oscars irrelevant? <sighs> And the, I, I cannot wait to ask Gary about it when I, t- because the question he like, a, how come Barbie didn't win an Oscar was actually like a topic, and it, like just you mentioned how, like of an international news show <laughs> to figure out why Barbie, <laughs> oh, it's, it's incredible. Imagine being upset. That how come Oppenheimer movie. got it? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, even if it was like really good. It's a Barbie movie. Right. You know, Batman Dark Knight, Heath Ledger, he, he's the reason, that one, just his performance. Right. Uh, maybe maybe you could say that for Barbie. It's a pretty fucking good movie. That's a different kind of movie, though. That's a dystopian movie about, you know, crime-ridden city. Barbie? Barbie's fun. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking you... about Barbie was crime-ridden city. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, is it good? <laughs> but how could you compare the two movies? I mean, well, uh, Oppenheimer's a movie that people will be watching decades from now. I'll tell you how. You check the algorithms and you see what topics are trending and you put them together like you're a fucking AI and you make a TV program out of that horse shit and you yeah. discuss it as if it's a thing. Can you imagine? You must be doing so well in life if like that's one of your 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 issues about like what, who got first of all who got sub at the Oscars at all. I looked at and how did Barbie not get it? Yeah, if you were just like <laughs> that's your big thought. If you're just passionate about the Oscars, I think you're an idiot. Right. But Bar- if Barbie got it, I didn't are you gonna even be this know yeah. it was on until I saw John Cena naked on the internet. I didn't even know it wasn't a movie called Barbenheimer. <laughs> I didn't know they mashed those together to save the theater industry that got killed after COVID and also all the movies sucking. 
the, the theater industry did get killed, though. Everybody knows they can stream things at home now, so they just started giving it to you at home, and then they don't have to pay as much. Yeah, a lot of great reasons to stay home forever, guy. I don't know if you know what's mm. piling up. Oh, boy. Don't even go out up. no more, man. Boy, the COVID really did in the streaming thing. It did in all the things. Hey, well, it did, really did in rather the, the theater thing because streaming movies at home is so much. If you've got a nice TV, and boy, you can yeah. get a big-ass TV cheap now. Like, what's a 65-inch um, Samsung TV cost right now? When I, I remember yeah. when they first came out with plasma screens. You get it's like, cheaper than insulin, I'll tell you like that. It was like a 24 or 28-inch plasma yeah. screen, and it was like $20,000. And I was like, <laughs> $20,000 for a TV? That's crazy. Yeah. Now, now a TV like that is free. They just give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even want it. Technically as low as $400. What? But that, I mean, that's the... Oh my God, that's insane. Stuff, but yeah, whatever. Sure, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. still 4K? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Let that's... me see what that looks like. For four, $397 from Walmart. It's not like a TV. Best so, Buy, it's three ninety nine. You sound like you're doing an ad for them. <laughs> but no, but Come look down. at that. That's insane. Yeah. 65 inches, 4K. Look how thin it is. 400 bucks. Th those yeah. fucking things were so expensive at one point in time. So now watching movies at home is awesome. Do you buy any, t like, I always thought, and I'm not smart with money in any way, but like top of the line technology such as that, like when $20,000 when it first comes out, never in my life, even if I would have the disposable income for a $20,000 plasma tube, I go, of course it. Another thing's coming out tomorrow, and this was going to... That's how it's always been for this stuff. But it wasn't when those $20,000 TVs came out. It was a long time before anything was that's better like, than them. Oh, well, it is when they first got the technology from Roswell, so it's going to be more... <laughs> this is... Uh, I think we're talking about, like, the 90s. So, like, see oh, if yeah. you can find an ad for a 28-inch plasma T, because they were plasma. And let's say... Let's just say, like, 96... 1997. I was selling. Uh, I was working at the Wiz, selling uh, cell phones and uh, PCs, yeah. like pre-built, like a Dell, like not Dell. Uh, Sony had a had a Pentium, you know, Pentiums, mm -hmm. and uh, very little markup on it. It was not the good department. To I make used to make my own. Well, that's what a smarter person would do. An idiot would come to our store and buy it there. Well, I bought that too. I did. I bought. It was like they were always getting better, but you could do a lot with uh, your. You could buy motherboards, and you yeah. could. You know, you learn how to put like the little, the jumpers in place with tweezers. And you oh, know what's you... interesting? The tweezers. And yeah. You, the jumpers were like master and slave. Oh my God! Yeah, and I don't know what they call them now. <laughs> Can you edit this out, Jamie? Uh, okay. So what? What year is this? It says 97 is the first Fujitsu plasma screen that was like 42 inches. Fujitsu. Oh, well, th I think, is that the first ones? Yeah, God, I, I feel like it was more money than that. I it feel like it was say how still $9,000 as opposed to 400 bucks. Like that $400 one is infinitely better than this fucking clunky hunk of shit with low resolution. No, that's, what, but that's what I'm talking about. That's why buying it at the very beginning, I mean, it's like dumber than buying a, a fucking boat. In 2003... Plasma TV was ten thousand dollars. Oh, that was seventy inches. That's pretty big. That's also why, yeah, like the Black Friday lines started getting so crazy because everyone's looking for good TV deals and whatnot. Yeah. Mm, right. 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 I that, killed three. Is men that what for people my TV. tried to get yeah, when they got aggressive? Those were the first. Those and laptops, like the first big things. You but Black, Black Friday sales on. are some of the darkest moments in humanity. You see those people fighting over like boxes of shit, like. What the fuck? I think people? I'm looking at the greatest country on earth, frankly, Joe. <laughs> That's what I think I'm looking at on Black Com Friday. Competition. On African American Friday. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, Joe. <laughs> when you say uh, these guys are getting uh, in trouble on TikTok, like, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. So, like, of course not. You're not a pedophile. Yeah. So, what specifically are they putting up on TikTok that's getting you them know, in trouble? You know, showing off, uh, like, blowing shit up. Into, I, I don't look at it. I, I, I don't want to uh, go on TikTok for any reason. <laughs> I don't care about anything on it. Uh, but we have the, on Jimmy's show, Jimmy show, we show clips. You know, like the clip of Wolf Blitzer. You ever see that clip of Wolf Blitzer where he has the, the, uh, I don't know what rank the guy is. This is in the early part of the war. And the guy's English is not, usually they have pretty good English, but his isn't great, right? And Wolf, who used to work for APAC, okay? Wolf's not a pro on the side of everything dude, right? And he goes, 
So they just blew up some some uh, refugee camp and to get this one guy to get this one Hamas. And Will's like, "Wait, you dropped blew up a four? There's four hundred five hundred people at that camp." And he goes, "Hey, that's war." And it, like Wolf's face, <laughs> he's just like, oh, "We gotta really? go to yeah." Oh wait, I forgot the best part. I don't want to say best part, but on um, Wolf's face, and you could see Wolf is like, "What in the fuck?" This is what I'm talking about. And he goes, uh, "Well, did you get the guy?" He goes, "Ah, oh, we we can't confirm. <laughs> they they might have not even got the guy." Well, if and they Wolf say goes, "They can't confirm. They probably didn't get him." Of course. And Wolf, so Wolf knows that. So Wolf, he's like, I, "We have to go to a break." <laughs> That's the. That sticks oh, with I me. I need to watch that. I need to watch that. I, I, yeah. I, I was trying to find it. I have the episode, the, the clip from. So is this show one of those ones that's going to get us in trouble? I don't. I, we can't. Probably right. No idea. Why? why? Oh, well, let's play it just for us. Oh yeah. Find a chance to this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay. Let me hear it. Back now to our breaking news here in the Middle East: a massive explosion at the largest refugee camp in Gaza. Joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Hecht. He's the international spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces. Thanks so much for joining us. I, I want to ask you first about this massive blast that we all just saw. We saw the video at the Jabalia refugee camp in Gaza. Is there anything more you could first of all tell us about how this explosion happened? Hi, Wolf. Thanks for having me. So we'll be coming out in the next, hopefully, hour with more data, but I can update you. Now that Hold on, pause. Senior... This is a Scottish Israeli dude? Like, what is yeah, this? That's, possibly. That accent's crazy. Do you know Australian Israeli? <laughs> I know, but the accent with the flag, I'm like, my brain is going, what's going on here? This I guy thought he had a cleft like palate for a minute. <laughs> We've got bombs there. Okay, go ahead. Hamas commander in that area. Uh, sadly, he was hiding again, as they do, behind uh, within civilians. And that's all I can see at this point. We're looking into it, and we'll be coming out with more data as we learn what happened there. Oh, it is Scottish. So yeah. can you confirm it was an Israeli attack that uh, destroyed a big chunk of that Jabalia refugee camp? Yes, I can. We went, we were focused the again on our the... target. A senior, Here's where Wolf gets upset. Yeah. Senior Commander Wolf, and we'll be updating uh, you with more data as the hour moves ahead. But even if that uh, uh, Hamas commander was there amidst all those Palestinian refugees who are in that, in that Jabalia refugee camp, Israel still went ahead and, and dropped a bomb there, attempting to kill this, Hamas, uh, this Hamas, Hamas commander, knowing that a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children, presumably would be killed. Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what you're hearing, Wolf. We, again, were focused on this commander again who you'll get more data who this man was uh, killed many many israelis uh, we're doing everything we can these are it's a very complicated battle space there could be infrastructure there there could be tunnels there uh, we're still looking into it and we'll give you more data as the hour moves ahead but you know that there are a lot of refugees a lot of innocent civilians men women and children in that refugee camp as well right this is the tragedy of war, Wolf. I mean, we, as you know, we've been saying for days, move south. Civilians that are not involved with Hamas, please move south. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to get we, a little bit more information. Uh, you knew there were civilians there. You knew there were refugees, all sorts of refugees, but you decided to still drop a bomb on that refugee camp attempting to kill the Hamas commander. By the way, was he killed? I can't confirm yet. I will be more uh, updated. He, yes, we know that he was killed. He said he was um, killed. About the civilians there, we're doing everything we can to minimize. Uh, I'll, tell, I'll say it again. Sadly, they are hiding themselves within civilian population. Okay. And again, we are doing this stage okay. by stage. Go, you, it's okay to shoot through all the people. It's sad that there's people. That's normal, and that's just war. Putin, by the way, is the most <sighs> evil man in the world. For nothing as fucked up as that. No. So look, hey, they do have to do. Isn't it crazy though when you see the difference between people looking at things objectively mm -hmm. versus people that look at things tribally? Yeah. And well. you're if if you're on the right side, you support Ukraine against Russia. Russia is the invader, and Russia is this horrible country. Right. And they won that right. whole thing. So. But this thing, 
the, the, like the, just the disparity in death count. I don't want to hear about Uyghurs nothing. ever again. Don't tell me about the no. fucking Uyghurs because they got a lot better than Gaza. The Uyghurs are living like kings <laughs> compared to that shit. So all I'm saying, see, they objectively, got a nice job what? at a cot. No, wait, the Uyghurs, you? they got a nice job at the factory in a cot. They're getting they're getting uh, work experience. <laughs> <laughs> What, what they're really learning does a trade. Happen, the thing about the Uyghurs is we don't even really know what happens to them. We don't know what they're doing to them, right? Because they deny that they put them in camps. It's a lot like Guantanamo. No, well, when I no, it's like Guantanamo. When I was there, I asked somebody about Uyghurs. I, you know, most people, by the way, don't even. If we bring it up, they go, "Oh, don't say that." When word. you say when I was there, you went to Guantanamo Bay, or you went to <laughs> China? No, I went to China. <laughs> so I was like, Jesus Christ, Kurt! When I was in Guantanamo. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt's part of the deep state. <laughs> I went to, out there in New Guantanamo. Times article from February about what Israel solar soldier videos revealed: cheering, destruction, and mocking Gaza. There you go. Bad optics. Of social media videos found Israeli soldiers filming themselves in Gaza and destroying what appears to be civilian property. The footage provides a rare and unsanctioned window into the war. Yeah. Uh, so that's why TikToks. And so the guy from the ADL, we played the recording of him going. Oh, I can't remember the name of the. He, he goes. We need. We got to get on this. We need the kind of genius that was behind uh, Talit. Or t people didn't know what he was saying. I'm Just like, force everybody to use a flip phone like a tell. That's why I said, is it tell? All those soldiers yeah. should be, no, no, no. You can't trust you assholes with TikTok. Well, you're, you're too wacky. How am I going to brag about what I'm doing? Yeah. How will I brag? Hey, if we could do shit like that, too bad we couldn't. We could have won those two wars we lost out there, huh? <laughs> if we could just starve. Hey, you're all going to be starved until the Taliban surrenders. Yeah. Why didn't we think of that? Right. We're not as good at fighting as them, I guess, is what it is. Well, they're in involved in fighting on their own shore every day. Yeah, against people that you, they hate with, uh, I would say, a racial thing. And I know yeah. it's real because I dated Israeli girl for 10 years. And uh, <laughs> the the whole top. Now, here's what I find. I think I'm, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if I had converted, because that was like a big thing, like, uh, you, you know, you're going to. And uh, I think if I had, uh, we could have moved to Israel and I could claim my birthright of land. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can move there. Like if you're an American She's Jew. A, she has a dual citizenship. I could a, be wrong, I, but I'll bet you you can do that. Have an American Jews gone over there to avoid prosecution? Um, well, every isn't country that, does that. I mean, that's. But like, isn't that a thing? Like American Jews, if someone's coming after him Meyer in America. Lan Meyer, I thought Meyer Lansky tried. Oh, am I thinking of The Godfather where the guy had. Yeah. Gone, uh, um, yeah, right. No, Meyer Lansky, did he do that? But I think there's a thing. Applicants must meet one of the following requirements one, have at least one Jewish birth parent, or two, have converted to Judaism. That's easy. Well, my wife that's would it. have been that. Yeah. You don't need to be religious to qualify to fit in our trips. In fact, many of our participants. Oh, you're talking about birthright. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so he goes. That's what I'm saying. The ADL guy goes. We need the people that came up with birthright to mm. put their heads on this TikTok thing. Well, the fucking yeah. the Jewish thing is a wild thing because it's a race that you can join. No, it's not. Right? It's a because religion. People think of it as a yeah. race. Well, they you know do. why? Because Hitler thought of it that way. Sure. Also, a lot of Zionists think of it that way. A bunch of Jewish people don't. You know, ultra Orthodox Jews. Which I always liked ultra because that's like the right, but you have to accept that some people feel that Jewish is a race. I yeah, called anti semites. <laughs> like, no, yeah. but there's like people that feel like right. there's there's a bunch of different races and Jewish is one of them. Like, I don't feel some like that, Jewish no. people, but but it is a thing, right? It's uh, a thing that some people believe, right? Well, yes, yeah, it's a thing you can join. Yeah. Imagine, like, imagine if you could join. Being Asian, well, Whoopi Goldberg did it successfully, <laughs> and she's never looked back. <laughs> she called the Holocaust white on white crime, and she's she did. she's <laughs> she did. You don't remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah. did. It was insane. <laughs> Basically, that's just some white people shit. <laughs> it was fucking. It wasn't about race. What? Because what? she did the homework of anti-racism that she was. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to read those dumb fuck books, but no one believes. By the way, anymore, it's done. You're supposed to learn that anti-racism. Anti-racism is that it's impossible. Is that done? Oh, it's fine. Everybody's done with anti-racism. No, no. The, there's still people embedded like ticks that are, but it's it's over, because now a bunch of people have finally figured out to have a goddamn lawsuit because all this weird ass shit was never legal, and it's been rejected by you know. Remember California? I think what did they strike down here, or they didn't vote for like and. Uh, uh, 
I'm blanking out. But now there's lawsuits up and down, and people are winning them. You must have talked this. Didn't you had James Lindsay on? He didn't bring up like any of this of uh, that somebody from a college just got like 25 million. Oh, Starbucks. Remember the girl from Starbucks, the manager, and uh, these guys wanted to use the bathroom, and it was uh, during the BLM times, right? And it came out that the uh, higher ups were like, she didn't really have any. They were like, we can't fire a black person, so just fire the white manager. So it looks like we fired. So, and so their thinking is not about their racial feelings. They're like optics in this media time. So that's what's so gross about bringing uh, these corporations into these moral things because none of them are moral. Right. And it's like Mr. Burn. Remember seeing Mr. Burns turn good uh-huh. on Simpsons? And he made little Lisa slurry. And she's like, Jesus, you're worse when you're trying to be good. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, well, they're only about money. And if you attach money to a DEI score and say, well, this is how you get tax yeah, breaks, and this is how you perverse get- Perverse incentives. Yeah, it's very perverse. And it's all just a control thing. And it's very ingenious. And it's, it's next door neighbors to a social credit score. Right, a DEI score is a corporate score that's it's essentially not even as very good. similar to the way the the real problem would be is we institute that nationwide. Okay, we already for have people, yeah. for individuals. So we already have that. First of all, there's a whole bunch of people that are debanked, the people that I don't even like. Many of them, some that I do, and they've already once to the very concept of shadow banning. Uh, uh, you know, Ian with uh, he was able to tell Ian uh, Finance. Sure. So he got. His, I think his account shadow banned. He goes, why would it be shadow banned? And it, it, it's like, it, it's, he said like four things that are definitely going to get you shadow banned that are not offensive even, but they're things that you shouldn't bring up like around, uh, you know, COVID. Right. Or, and uh, even now on Zuckerberg's platforms that you're not going to, you're going to be, sh- but why is shadow banning a thing? How is that? How did anyone who isn't a piece of shit <laughs> go along with the idea that we don't have to tell you what you did and we're not going to tell you what we're doing to you? And that's our right to do that. Okay. Well, not only that, but they're all agreeing that they're going to do something to throttle the opinions of people that have problematic opinions in their eyes, but it's not illegal. How's it working out for you? So it doesn't violate any of the customer, uh, any of the agreements that you sign. Well, you signed signed away all your rights to everything already, so go fuck yourself. (laughs) But but, uh, how's that work? You could do all that goofy shit you want, but- uh, my, Malice is right in that white pill thing. The shit collapses under its weight because you can only go so long telling people to ignore reality. You know how the Soviet Union collapsed from everybody? Like, we're getting the stage now where people go, eh, we all know it's a scam. And the next stage after that is like, wait, why am I saying we all know it's a scam about all the things? <laughs> like, it's not too far. Next lockdown, you lock people down, they got nothing to do but look into shit. That's why a lot of prisoners know like more current events than Bill Maher. Like people that have been down for 20 years because there's nothing to do but read and learn things if you're smart. So they did that all of society. <laughs> so some people, and they said, don't do your own research, which is such a suspicion. Don't go into daddy's forbidden closet of mystery. <laughs> oh, okay. I won't. Don't yeah. look into Hillary's. E- yeah, that's <laughs> a hilarious one to infantilize people to the point where you're telling them, don't research things. Yeah. We'll handle that. We're the professionals. Meanwhile, we lie all the time. They're doing to us what they did to Haiti. Yeah. And the shit we do to other countries, they're going to do to you. So the shit we did to Haiti, which is never let them have their own leaders and coup them when they had one elected one. That's us now. Now that's us. We're going to pass the law so you can't vote for the guy you want. Why is he even being allowed to run at all if it's such a fascism is coming? I don't even understand any. The messages are so mixed. And the only way to believe them is to be highly frightened all the time. New York Times has just started doing this new thing on Instagram where they take the actual writers and they have the writers talk about the issues. I'm leaving. And when you see (laughs) when you see the right, they don't understand what they're doing. This is exactly who we thought was writing these things. It's like this <laughs> very effeminate guy yeah, and what? this woman that it's like the kind of woman that seems like you she would never fucking done this. Yeah. do at a party, like like talk down to you, and it's, no. it's just who you thought. Yeah, exactly. The the type of people that would you know these like these ultra liberal out of touch people. Yeah, and these people are talking about. Uh, one of the guys was talking about Donald Trump's words being taken out of context, that it would be a bloodbath because he was talking about the auto industry and yeah. the economy. And then this guy starts bringing up other episodes of violent rhetoric. It's hilarious. But 
You yeah, gotta guys, watch this. Look. Give me some oh, volume. Give me some God. volume. Well, no. What I guess seized on those comments and said they were an example of him calling for political yeah. violence or predicting violent actions if he didn't win in November. His supporters said that those comments were taken out of context. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Trump has a history of using violent rhetoric dating back to his 2016 campaign. That language took on new significance after the January 6th attack on the Capitol in 2021. And throughout his third campaign for president, he's been getting a lot of attention for the way he talks about violence and retribution on the trail. He suggested <laughs> exactly. that the general See? So this is the New York Times. It's all falling this apart. This is these hard-nosed reporters with the cup of coffee that are like fucking chasing down leads and they're pulling their hair out and they're, they're meeting people in back alleyways. This is Woodward and Bernstein. Do people think that's this still? This is Watergate. Like, like <laughs> no, but I mean, they're they're essentially like ultra hard left activists that are masquerading as journalists, and everything has their opinion on it. They're Every also, they're front also, page article. Yeah, they're also masquerading as activists. They're bourgeois twits. Yeah. They have a lifestyle brand, which is I'm a Sex in the City guy or gal, and I work in the paper. They uh -huh. do the same amount of work as when you see those a day in the life of Google. First yeah. they go to the chair. It's Twitter. Yeah, that yeah, video. Whatever. That video they, is amazing. Yeah, and they don't. They don't even make that. Well, New York Times. That's the big time. So all the plum jobs. You know, like. It's all, it's kind of similar to uh, when people were mad that Seinfeld, they were like demanding, you know, why riding in, uh, to get coffee with Seinfeld in cars isn't a diverse enough. Yeah. And he goes, because uh, Seinfeld, every time they bring these things up to him, I, I love his fucking response to that. But at a place like the New York Times, they have to go, oh, we need to bring these. So all, all like, exa how exactly you put it, the, you could guess what they look like. All of them have moved up from like the gamer gate which at the time I was an adult and I was like, but I don't care about this, but they've all, we're moving up in the world of media because wh where's the money coming from? You gotta hope you do well enough at uh, making little smear articles on a shitty video game website to get picked for the big leagues and some people did. Yeah. And they've been moving up and then you, re like me, I like, I'm, oh my God, 20 years have passed and then I see like, that's that sh little twerp, like if uh, the, the one that got Shane fired actually went somewhere in life. If I find, like, there's people like him that work with the DHS <laughs> to, about the terrorism of, uh, you know, saying whatever, whatever the fuck this idiot's referring to. Well, yeah, they've, they're, they've become embedded in the intelligence community. Well, they're all, it's all a thing of, like, your career, right? If you want your career, mm -hmm. you can either say the truth about, a, thi about yeah. a thing or you can worry, oh, you must not want to have a good career. Yeah. Oh, your career. Uh, go keep all people have to do is not be a punk to their career. I'm not saying careers don't matter. I'm saying um, I will never be a bitch to a fucking career. Like, who would do that? Yeah, but you don't have to. See, the difference between you and a guy working in government, it's very stark, stark contrast. Oh, no, in government, You're you a comic. have. Yeah. Yeah. What, but even comedian incentives got perverse, perverted. Like, I work in government at a certain point. Did they, though? Yeah. Well, only okay. they, did, they only did with people that suck. Not, they, they, they didn't with good comics. Okay, I don't mean like I'm not. I would never say that dumb shit. Be like, like woke is killing comedy. No, comedy is a thing that's been around the whole time. What it'll kill is like your Disney fucking corporate uh, figuring out how to sell it to people. Yeah, that's killing that. Yeah, the movies. Right, but not stand up's the lowest rung, dude. This right. is the one like, oh, we, I see it. To, we were laughing last night. I was only telling Ian about people go, hey, he's a failed comic. What I think they mean Who is who said that. Oh, people, it's like an insult people throw around. To who? About who? Well, uh, the example I'm thinking of while I say this is because I sidekick on Jimmy's show, there's a bunch of people that are like hardcore blue no matter who that were like friends of his and well, Martin that are like, fuck you, you're despicable. <laughs> like this unbelievable, it's your duty. You know, like the, it's your duty to vote for the lesser of two evils. Remember the 2016 shit mm -hmm. of like the moral outrage, right? And then... But your choices are, I didn't pick the right evil for you, That's and you, you're judging me for that. Because you didn't take a stand in the right There's direction. There's nobody who's not evil, that's the though. the only way it's going to work they out They don't even say us. the right. They don't say the right direction. Right. They go, the less evil direction, like right. I'm supposed, my heart's supposed to swell Wait, with emotion. Also, you're not supposed to stand up and say, hey, both of these things suck. Because if you do, then you're, you're on the wrong side. But mine's better, though. Admit that. Mm. Mine thing's marginally better, that's and I cling to that like about. a child. They always yeah. want to talk about that. If you talk about Biden, about Biden being corrupt, there was a, oh my God, in comparison to Trump, like why are we comparing him to Trump? To Let's pretend tr Trump was never born. 
if Trump was never born and it was Biden versus, you know, fill in the blanks. How long was Trump in government? RFK Jr. How long was Trump but in if, government? Oh, oh. If, you're, if you have just Trump, uh, just uh, Biden versus any politician, if they were just running and they get to pull up all this shit that he did while he was vice president, <laughs> all this shit his son was involved in, all the stuff that they absolutely know, like unaccounted for millions. Where did all that money go? How did, they, how did these people get all this money? Like, what were you they doing? They all do that. How much were you getting paid? Why were you getting paid so much for this in university where you had a job where you never showed up? And yeah, you right. Anybody else? That was a Democrat if Biden wasn't president, like if Obama was running against right. Biden. Imagine a world where he wouldn't get taken down by It was this. like that. He ran, like, that's who he was before he became vice president. Well, that's who go, he was in 1988. His nickname was Uncle. It be yeah. his, <laughs> Uncle Joe. That's not because you're good. They call you Uncle Joe. What like, do you mean? Why, what is Uncle? He was, remember, he's creepy? Like creepy uncles? Remember what you're Obama would go, oh, that's Uncle Joe. Uh, because Biden was like, get a shotgun. You remember those clips that would go around where he was like, you know, and, and well, that's all. That was when he was running for 2020, or wasn't it? No, no, no. When he was vi when he was Obama's vice president, and you know he's a gaff machine. Biden would say goofy shit. Yeah, this he always his, he always says goofy shit. Yeah, this is when his brain worked. Yeah, and the way the white and the White House was hugely embarrassed by it all the time, and the way they would do the pitch about it, like that's Uncle Joe. Th that's how they would pitch him. And then he was a joke. So you're saying uncle is like he's old or goofy or dumb. Like how I'm an unmarried uncle of two? I've never heard uncle use as a pejorative before. That's why I'm confused. Like a crazy uncle? Okay, crazy yeah. uncle. Because you're just saying background? Uncle Joe. No, like Uncle Joey. We call Joey Uncle Joey. Everybody calls Ted Nugent Uncle Ted. But the, when they say that's because you're, you see, you're thinking about it like a poor person right now. From, their, from their standpoint, <laughs> their standpoint is a condescending, oh, that's a wacky uncle. Yeah. That real upper, upper class view of calling. So you're talking about it like the way someone from a normal place in neighborhood thinks about family. <laughs> like, yeah. That's not how they think about it. But I, 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 I should even brought up uncle. It's, it's, it, first of all, if, if, Trump's only been in government for how long? Biden's been there for 50 years. And we can go easily look up all the damage he did to all the people. Yeah. That's why there's so many undecideds and various things. This because is my point about it. Let's pretend Trump doesn't exist. Pretend Trump doesn't exist. I would and like then, to. And then tell me, how come RFK Jr. can't get on the primary? Just tell me. If, if this is a real democracy, you tell me yeah, yeah. why this guy who is a Kennedy, who is an environmental attorney, who's, you know, got even though he's got this voice issue, he's extremely articulate. Yeah. Very good speaker. Yeah. Very good recall of controversial ideas. But who the fuck doesn't have controversial ideas in the world of 2024? Who doesn't have controversial ideas? The guy knows what the fuck he's talking about when he talks. When right. he talks, you can hear a guy who knows what the fuck he's right. talking about. That guy from the New York Times, in my world, has controversial ideas. My, I think what he's saying is controversial about, you know, taking things out of context, talking about violent rhetoric. By the way, Biden and Obama in 2020 were both talking about who could beat each other up. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> they're that dumb old dudes. I'll go they're dumb old dudes. So, but he's, when he's saying I like to punch him in his mouth, that's what he's talking about. And when he's saying that people should be executed for treason... Well, guess what? Don't make that, me like him. Hold on. That is actually the fucking, that's, the, that's what happens to you if you get tried and convicted for treason. Yeah, right. That's the punishment. Yeah. The punishment is execution. Oh, it's uh, kind of always been execution. No shit. So, what, don't know so saying that that's violent rhetoric, what that guy's saying, in my mind, is like trying to, look, he's, he says bad enough things as it is. <laughs> Instead of distorting yeah, right. what he says, which now makes yes, me uh, not trust you, just say what is actually going on. Yes. And also talk about the evidence that shows that Biden is insanely corrupt because <laughs> both of those things are true, too. And if you don't want to talk about one because you think it props up the other, you're a part of the problem. Uh what, you treat, yeah, you're infantilizing you. the whole country and treating us like we're children. That's right. And we we, we want to know, why didn't RFK, why couldn't he get in the primaries? Right. Like, if this is real, if this if democracy is real, you guys don't just get to decide who runs your party against the will of the entire United States. But they're experts. 
But isn't that insane that no one has a problem with that, but everyone thinks that if Trump gets into office, he's going to become a dictator. You've been talking to De Niro again. <laughs> I, d- I don't even listen. I d- when, when De Niro starts talking about Trump, I love him too much. I change Joe, the channel. Is he like... Um, you saw you ever see be, you ever see being there with uh, Peter Sellers? I think he and Trump hate each other personally. I think that's really? what that is. Yeah, I think probably. What are the odds? He, he seems mentally into- handicapped. I'm not kidding. He seems meant like you know, I don't know. I have a feel. He doesn't yeah. know about. He was on Bill Maher. Bill Maher has him on to ask him. I don't. It's crazy that Bill Maher would ask him anything. You know, there's a National Guard in the in the fucking subways and shit. Yeah. So Bill asks him, "What do you think about it?" He goes, "I, I don't. I don't know." I don't know about that. If there's anything Listen, I can do to help, all I you guess. should be asking Robert De Niro about is two things: yeah. awesome movies and divorce. Yeah, like <laughs> yes. tell me what happened. To I would you love to ask with about a that. Divorce. Tell me what happened if you want to talk about it, and tell me what happened to you with these awesome fucking movies. I don't need. I don't need to know jack shit about his politics. Well, he does. He doesn't. That's the thing. He just tells you he feels away. That's all he's got to say. Yeah, but it's almost like it's almost unfair. To have a guy like that on yes. a public show and talk to him about politics. Do you know what it reminds me of? When the beauty pageant contestant yes. can't pick yes. a thing on a map yes. and they're making yes. fun of her. Yes. Right? They mock yes. her. And I'm like, is that fair to do to her? That's not her area. Well, what? they made her have a speech and she got stuck in a loop and she couldn't get out. Remember? Yes. She oh, didn't. Yep. Remember? She didn't know what to say. She's like, and then I think <laughs> she's panicked. We need, women need she's, to do more better. She yeah, was right. She was locked They'd up. Ha- <laughs> She locked up. But everybody was making it seem that she locked up because she's a complete and fucking total idiot. But that's not. She's in a pretty contest. Not only, but that's not just that, dude. It, you, anybody could get locked up like that. You're on stage yeah, in right. front of people with TV cameras pointed at you. You've never experienced that in your life, and you have a panic attack. It doesn't mean you're an idiot. And that's also Robert De Niro. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're in it's the, the wrong same element. thing. Yeah, it's right. like, why is he talking about this? Why is he talking about this publicly? If you're gonna come out and say that you have a really deep seated hatred for one of the two people running for president, and you can't just be, he's a bully, he's a piece of shit, I hate him. You, you, I think you probably, if you're gonna express yourself about it and alienate fifty percent of the country, which it seems like it is. You're going to have to do better than that. You should have some specific things. Like he right. did some real estate deals with people in New York. Let me tell you what he did to fuck people over. I would love to he hear it. He did this and yes. that. Let me tell you what he did that was fraud. He did this and that. Like if you're if you're supporting what New York is doing to him right now, like guess what? You're going to shut down construction. You're going to shut down all these real estate developers who all overvalue yeah. their homes. Kevin Leary was talking. Kevin Leary from Shark Tank was talking about I, that. Dude, Kevin Leary was, uh, we played the clip of this. CNN's like, yeah, yeah, but the girl wasn't dumb either. She knows he's right. right. They're, they're playing a part on there. It's not that she's stupid. She goes, but isn't it? He goes, no, we won't do business here. They this is crazy. They cannot say anything positive about Trump, and they don't understand, but by doing that, it delegitimizes everything else they say because everyone knows they're coming at the fucking news with a slanted perspective. And yeah. th- there's no objective news. There's It doesn't exist. Yeah. You have right-wing Fox, and you have left-wing everything else. And you will be fucking confused as shit if you watch both of them back to back. I would just not watch any news for a, l- a long while because of that. It's just I have a job where now I have to learn things. Dude, it's been wild watching you. Like, as all Get the years PTSD. that I've known you. <laughs> <laughs> all the years that I've known you to watch you, like, completely flip into full-on conspiracy mode. When we yeah. first when we first met, it was probably, like, what, 15 years ago or something like that? Maybe yes. more? And I Maybe would be, 20. frankly, smug. I remember making fun of, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Jim Carrey's ex-wife, because she thought, you know, her kid shot, got all to Jenny McCarthy, yeah. And I had a joke. I'm like, ah, it's just because he's half Canadian. It comes out, like, but no, I was being glib. I was yeah. being glib. Just like... Tom Cruise said to Matt Lauer, you're being glib, and he was right. I, I don't think that's not Jim Carrey's kid. That's someone else's kid. That's another, and I was inaccurate in my mockery as I'm, well. I'm pretty sure. But but either way, the 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 connection between- I should have looked into it a little. The connection between vaccines and autism, if you just bring it up, people's hackles will get up, and they'll start getting don't upset even talk at about you. It. Yeah. They get very upset at you, and everybody feels complicit because they vaccinate their kids, <laughs> and everybody feels like they don't want to be attacked by being anti-science. 
clients and then there's there's that pejorative that gets tossed around that they hit me with so many times during the pandemic anti vax you were right uh, dude but not only that it's not technically a vaccine yeah, it no, was yeah. an experimental medication that had never been widespread distributed to the fucking world. It had never been done. Yeah, right. Well, biological women have never had dicks before, but it's a world of miracles now. <laughs> now we live in a world where anything is possible. Uh, Better, yeah. easier to clean women. Did you see that the, the, the bike rider say, well, I don't know why you could say I'm not a biological woman. Uh, I'm a woman and I'm biological. So it's it's on my passport. It says I'm a female. Like, That's a good. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, you, no, you're a touche, touche, sir. Yeah. I'm biological and I'm a woman. <laughs> That's great. It's so dumb. And then whoever, I, I think it. it's Trevor Noah, lets him get away with it. But Tre whoever the fuck it is, it's one of those guys. It's one of the late night guys. It might not have been Trevor Noah. It could be any. It of might them. have been Jimmy Kimmel or a, no, They're no, it wasn't Jimmy. It wasn't. Maybe been Jimmy Fallon. Either way. No, Seth. <laughs> I don't you know. Fucking list of them. Boy, no. I think it was Seth. I think it was Seth. But either yeah. way, no, you're not. You can get a woman <laughs> pregnant. This is so different. Don't say you're not a biological male because now we're talking in terms of science. If you're yeah. getting me to say that you identify yeah. as a woman, so you're a woman, you want me to call you I'll, Jill. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, that's. But uh, if you I? want to say you are now a biological woman, that's not true. And if yeah. it says on your passport. Now, female, someone's lying. You, okay, uh, yeah. you're lying. You could say you you want to be identified as a woman. Who gives a shit? But if you want to say you're a biological woman, that's nonsense. You now you're you're a, you're making me deny the scientific understanding of the human body that took forever to achieve. Is that People, so much to ask? They, they had to <laughs> figure out chromosomes. They had to figure out the X and the Ys. And uh, they had well, to yeah. figure out it's all. There's so much they had to work. All it, of is, it is Trevor Noah. Look at him fucking pretending oh. it makes sense. Look at the fucking guns on this savage, first of all. Trevor, listen, oh, yeah. to, <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. There's basically no published research on this question. However, uh, there's good reason to think that there isn't. But I think it's irrelevant because we allow all kinds of competitive advantages within women's sport because who gets singled out for scrutiny is based on by the way out canadian yeah. they're all goofy up there it's portland times 100 Deport up there. these canadians they lost man. it they lost it well keep going with this i want to hear the rest of it the fragile weak cis white woman from the rest of us the rest of us you're yeah. a fucking dude you're a fucking dude. That's not the full t the clip. The full clip is she goes, well, I am biological and uh, I am a woman. I so I'm that. a biological yeah. woman. Like to, to just sit there and let someone say that this is the problem with television. Yeah. Someone as bright as him, too, to sit there and not say something. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> He's playing a game. They're playing a game. You got to stay within the lines, color within the lines. Right. Otherwise, you're going to get in trouble. Well, look. but obviously, like nonsense, uh, fucking call, nonsense. Dude, I'll call you a woman just for dressing too nice. I, I got have, no problem with that. I have no idea. If that's what you'd like me to do, I will do it. That's not the problem. The problem is when you're trying to get me to deny science and you start saying shit like I'm a biological woman I should be able to compete with women in women's sports men with 80 to 100 times as much testosterone at no competitive disadvantage and that fact has not been picked up by what? the broader media language. what was that fact so what was that again back that up relationship between natural testosterone and performance <laughs> there's no relationship whatsoever between unaltered natural endogenous testosterone and sport performance about 0.5% of elite male track and field athletes at the world championship level are below the women's average of testosterone. That Competing with men with 80 to 100 times as much testosterone at no competitive disadvantage. And that fact has not been picked up by the broader media landscape. Oh, go. First of all, so stop, 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 say, stop. Hit the, hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. So here's the problem with what she's saying. First of all, <laughs> there's, there's many advantages of, of being biologically male. There's larger lungs. There's larger hearts. There's larger cardiovascular capacity. There's the more of an ability to generate force because you have larger, stronger of bodies. Of course. 
this idea that because guys who are cycling, who, by the way, when they take their blood, let's let's try to understand when they're taking their blood. Because if they're taking their blood and measuring it during a fucking race, yep. they're destroyed. Their bodies are destroyed. It's actually been argued that the Tour de France is actually safer to do on the drugs that Lance Armstrong took. I believe than you. not on the drugs. Because it's so insane. Yeah, no, I, I fully believe that, dude. I believe That's why they too. all were doing it. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's the only way to win. And the, 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 if you took away, that was the thing about Lance Armstrong. Like, if you take away his titles, which they tr- supposedly did, but nobody buys it now, and everybody knows, you take away his titles, you got to go to 18th place to find a guy who didn't get popped for steroids. It's a fucking everyone dirt, knows now. It's a dirty yeah. Good. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. No one gives a shit. Lance Armstrong can go anywhere in there. Nobody, nobody gives a shit anymore. Because I always no thought that was mad. fuck the fuck up. It's fucked. Uh, okay, males with the highest testosterone levels were significantly faster in the 20 meter and 30 meter sprint trials compared to males with lower testosterone levels. Sh- yeah, shut the fuck up. You're lying. Well, you know, you know what makes me you, get- that. But th- for them to like just sit there and let that person say that and broadcast it on television, like this isn't live. You can check that. You can oh, stop. Oh, good point, dude. Yeah, you, you can. You could research the yeah. thing. Yeah. You're, you're making a point, a very important point, saying that there's no competitive advantage for testosterone, which we all know to not be true, which is why athletes get pop taking testosterone. There's a guy from the UFC. Because it Walt, doesn't work. There's a guy from the UFC, <laughs> Walt Harris, one of the UFC heavyweights. He just got popped. He's He gets suspended for four fucking years because they found in, uh, non-endogenous, uh, the, the exogenous te- testosterone. Oh, endogenous found, is... Is, Human body I produces. See. Okay. They found it of. They actually get it from wild yams, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's like no shit. yeah, they, they they make uh, exogenous testosterone from wild yams. I never heard that. Yeah, it's like a wild. I believe it's a Mexican yam. That yeah, it is. is. Fucking, <laughs> yeah, like, that's why Mexicans have so many kids eating those yams and fucking yeah. up a storm <laughs> and starting cartels and doing fuck out. But um, yeah, so. When I had Nowitzki on, who was the head of USADA, who was the guy who busted Lance Armstrong, he was saying that conceivably they might be able to get around this by developing testosterone of animal origin, like extracting testosterone from animals, which could be possible. So, but right now that's theoretical. But we know that they can find out whether the testosterone that's in your system is exogenous or not, or 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 endogenous, based entirely on the carbon isotope profile. So they could they do these t- carbon isotope tests, oh. and then they could find out if it's from the wild yams or if it's from a, a human being. With carbon, you measure all kind of shit. Well, look. look all, so the, I might have butchered that, obviously, because I'm a moron. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. Not as much sure. as that chick in that clip. Yeah. Well, that's that chick is a guy. But. Okay, and a liar, and who's trying to justify what they're doing, dominating a woman's sport with their goofy fucking rainbow glasses on, that they're not just cheating. Because what they're doing is cheating. Joe, and what he's doing is being a little fucking cheating supporter by letting this person say these lies, which he, as a fucking man, knows isn't true. Uh, well, okay, this is what I find unbelievable. So all, so she has said some bullshit about, well, there's no study that shows this and that. So you know all this shit about testosterone... I saw the footage of how it works out in the thing. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to talk about none yeah. of that. You won. You beat everybody. I'm watching you like Captain America running around the black guy on the track yeah. in the <laughs> second one. Are you like, whoa, how'd that guy beat that black guy that bad? With like, what? Is everybody yeah. fucking crazy? You're just We don't need awesome. to get into none of it. You just happen to be a woman and be the best ever. I go full force. The, fun, the best move you can make is to be fully into it and i say the women plus community it's about time leave those losers in your wake dude i i find it hilarious this is what the most like thing that has made me snap you know uh over the last couple years this is the thing well no this thing of this is the thing no, not this specific thing but you you've been snapping no, no no like like you've had a lot of things that made you snap what i, I mean don't by think s- you can narrow it down i mean what snap <laughs> No, I can. I can pinpoint it. I can fucking pinpoint it. Really? Yeah. And when I, by when I say snap, I mean I'm not on any side of left or right, and mm-hmm. I'm not voting for president. I don't believe in any of it. Right. And I, f- I went back. My black friends in comedy in New York, although I haven't talked to God for yet, I apologize to them personally for dismissing their conspiracy shit. Every black guy conspiracy that I was told that I went like, I apologize to like them. Which one? Oh, fuck. Uh, 
when I see Godfrey, I gotta tell him because Godfrey used to come on Race Wars with me and Shroud, and he go, "Yeah, they want to put black men in a dress," and I would go, "Nobody twisted Flip Wilson's arm," and uh, Bro. little did I understand. Of course they do. They want to put everyone in a dress except women. <laughs> like, yeah! they, I owe give an apology because but they now, want everyone emasculated. But not very many white men. It's uh, way more black men. If you think about the number of whoever scares black you the most, men, right? Put them in a dress. That's why The Rock has right. to be in a tutu Brock at some point. Lesner. Put Brock Lesnar in a dress. Right. If he wants to be in the movies, he should right. do that. Right. Right. Because right. you're right. scary. Oh, he's a nice, but not as scary. Right. You know. Right. And especially these like. Feminine men that sound like New York Times reporters are the ones who are putting together these films. You know, it'd be great. Put the rock in a tutu. <laughs> get his toes done. Yeah. Get his toes done. Get a, get a manny and a penny. So much of yeah. that is that, by yeah. the way. No, that up talk. Yeah. Well, basically, his it was Violet. Here's and my he advice. <laughs> Here's my basic advice. When anyone is talking about anything important <laughs> and they talk like this, don't listen. <laughs> it means they're not sure what they're saying is real, so they're hedging well, in their way, language. Unless you're like deep in tech, unless you're like a programmer, and you just like you're, you're basically talking like you know people down here say y'all. You know, like if you're you live in Boston, you got a Boston accent. You know, yeah. if that's you. Like okay, you're just trapped. You know who that guy is on Twitter? He'll say y'all. Hey y'all. Right. D I hey, But they're not he's not from the South. Right. They don't want to say guys. So they well, say gay guys can say y'all. Whereas like not that one. A, a straight guy who's in a football <laughs> who lives in New York, they don't say y'all. Hey, y'all wanna go get use. a fucking pizza? Do you just wanna get pizza? Yeah. You say use. Use. Yeah, yeah, but you don't say y'all if you're a straight guy in New York City no. who's like uh from Long Island. Maybe for a joke. Who wants to go get pizza. <laughs> y'all wanna get pizza? Like what? <laughs> y'all. Who the fuck are you? You don't say Is that, that appropriation? But gay guys are allowed to appropriate Southern culture. Um, well, I've you yet know, to say y'all unironically. I've been here for uh, four years. They're the fashion segment on our human centipede that is our country. So of, of course they digest it and then shit it into your into your mouth. All the ladies in my family have adopted y'all. I uh, find it too preposterous at fifty six years old to step in and change my vernacular. This is exactly what I was complaining about. Is what you just said right there. You're just gonna start saying y'all. Yeah. Fuck you. They like it. They like saying y'all. It's fun for them. They, they they like being Texan, so it's cool. I don't have a problem with it, but uh, they're also not on television talk, <laughs> <laughs> talking about Gaza. Oh, Y'all yeah. need to understand <laughs> that there hey, are yeah. tunnels under Y'all. all of those hospitals. Y'all need to know. Um, Y'all need to come up out of them tunnels, first of all. Yeah, like, how about you tell Hamas enough? <laughs> Because if you don't, that was the, the thing that dri- drives me the most crazy what? when people talk about, you know, well, Hamas is doing this and Hamas is doing that. These people, they voted in Hamas. Like, these people are the poorest of poor, deprived of sanitation, education, proper hospital care, food. What the fuck are you talking about? How are they going to rise up? So, Just run out and get shot en masse until the Hamas runs out of bullets and then you bludgeon them to death with rocks? I, 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 okay. What that, are you saying? The voting for Hamas, by the way, they forced a vote there. They're like, you have to have a democratic process. And then they voted for Hamas. The same way Fatah became a party. So the, they voted. Then they go, you voted wrong. We're putting you in a concentration camp. And so, okay, why did you have them have a vote if there was a... It's like voting for Tr- Trump is Hamas here for the, for like Keith Olbermann kind of people. Trump is voting... Voted for Trump is voting for yeah. Hamas. It was in 2016. That's why they've been punishing us with shitty movies because they're like, you're Hamas. Now, I want to just- Punishing us with shitty movies. Yeah, everybody, in 2016, when they were like, we need to destroy all masculinity on this planet oh. in all of media, because you are Hamas, frankly, all of you, for voting Trump. I want to thank them for that, because it really made my ratings go up. Because uh, it was like a bottleneck. It was like, there, wasn't there was a- no, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you could be a guy. You could that, be a guy. That's, where the, boss, hatred, that's where the hatred is. That's where the hatred is. Yeah. That's part of it. But, but, you're but not it's, a, yeah. it's foolish. It's so foolish. It's threatening to people. It's only threatening to morons. That's right. All all different perspectives are only threatening to morons, unless those people with that different perspective are trying to control your life or trying to fucking cheat and pretend that they're a girl and dominate girl sports. It just takes rainbow glasses. All you got to do. Yeah, rainbow and glasses, a, and oh, you're in. I it's extra believe you because you with have your jacked <laughs> arms. <laughs> How much can that dude deadlift? That dude looks like a house. Does that dude still have a dick? That's what I want to know. Which is the 
most crazy one. I hope so because that is the most crazy one that they can have sex with women and his claim they're dick? a woman. His girl dick. Is sheenus. And then go into the <laughs> locker rooms and yeah. b- and wave that dick around everybody's face. And and everybody's What's fine the problem? with it. It's a woman. Yeah. 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 I'm more than fine with it. Bro, I had no idea this was even going down until I criticized that fighter, that Fallon Fox fighter, that, that fought twice without telling women that she was trans. It's like a dating- Twice! It's like how on a dating service, you're not supposed to say, you're like, can Hilarious. you tell me if- Dude, Hilarious. it's the same, same, yeah. I saw comics arguing that. Yeah, you shouldn't have to tell people. Like, what the fuck are you saying? You should have to tell people if you owe taxes. You should, <laughs> you, you should, you should have to tell people everything. You should have to tell people everything. If you're getting involved with a woman and you, you're really into her and she's really cool, and let's say you make 150 grand a year, you're doing great. You're out there, and you find out this lady is like ninety thousand dollars in debt to the IRS. Yeah. You're like, what? And you're yeah. thinking about getting married. You're like, oh, now I take that on. Hey, I, why are you? Why are you so in debt? What the fuck? It's, I feel like it's a scam. Like I got played. If I found out some shit like that, I don't think I should have to tell a woman that I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a guy and you find out that this person that you're falling in love, you're thinking about having a family with. And God, she's so cool. And then you go, oh, you have a dick? That <laughs> seems like you should tell people that. Yeah, well, Jerry Springer tried to handle those disputes back in the day. My favorite one is there's this trans guy with a hijab on and yes. says, uh, people yeah. are saying, why are you cosplaying? I am not cosplaying. Cosplaying is when you're pretending to be something you're not. I am a Muslim woman. That's why I am wearing the traditional Muslim. And then there's this like lady, this Middle Eastern lady goes, I will pay for a one trip round first class ticket for you to go there. You won't need round trip because oh, you're I not coming that. back. Yeah. Yeah. What well, are you talking about? You know what it is? It's like you should have gone with more burqa, dude. Put a full burqa. Right. Because... Cover the whole deal. Because that's like an elegant, wearable pronoun with no surgery, but the full deal. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's a woman. And you're like, does she have a dick? I don't know. I'm not her husband. Either way, at the end of the day, you're flying off a fucking roof. <laughs> it's like, um, like this, this, is, this thing, this is a game that you can only play in America. You try playing that in these countries that you suppose you support Hamas. Do you really? Okay. Yeah, we support Hamas. Go over there. You go over there with these fucking rainbow shirts on and watch what they do to you. Like, what are you fucking saying? You go go to most parts of. You saw Bruno, right? Yeah. Okay. He almost got beaten to death for walking around all gay in that Hasidic area, and he yeah. tried to go provoke uh, in Syria like Islamic terrorists by being Bruno, and they and he would show him gay porn, and they would go, "Oh, John Kiriakou tells the story. He was a consult." And he goes, they'll go, oh, that is no good. They put on their glasses, these like old ass terrorists. He'll go an extra mile to find the people for the thing. And they'll look and they'll go, no, that is no good. When he went to Israel, that dude never breaks character. He had to break character to tell the yeshiva students, hey, no, I'm Sasha Cohen. So they didn't beat him to death. So like anybody trying to look, the gay thing attaching it to a cause is the same as if you're my friend's an animator and the animators union has declared a position on Gaza. That's to break their union, to attach it that has nothing to do with you. If you're, we're queers for Palestine, uh, I almost think it's an op or something because that's deliberately attaching something that is, you, don't, don't attach your cause. BLM, we support Hamas. <laughs> they were very forthcoming right in the beginning and a bunch of dippy liberal uh, uh, Jews gave them money, didn't you? Mm. And they told you they liked Hamas, but just now you're mad. You just now figured out because you don't listen to people. So like, Every cause, it's important. Oh, that is important. Your gay cause, it should be its own thing. Don't try to attach it to a thing that's not local with you that is a bunch of people dying. That's a really important thing on its own. Yeah. But that's how people think is you try to like uh, how we do laws, you know, you you put earmarks. You don't try to earmark other people's fucking rights thing also, with your rights. Supporting Hamas is insane. Well, then why supporting did people do it? Supporting Palestine. Yeah, right. That's the crazy thing that Dave Smith told me about. The fact it's that not top secret. Not only that, is it not top secret that people were in the streets of Israel They're about to protesting hundreds of thousands of people in the streets for months before October 7th? That's why I say read Israeli news. 
But he was it about just, to be it out just of office. Shows you like how segmented all this shit is because it used to be that woke included like any Ex- form dude, of anti-Semitism. You're exactly is, fucking right. Right. October seventh was when the or woke ended. Was yeah. October seventh. Yeah. Because that's when a bunch of people found out that what Whoopi said was right. White on white violence, all like they're like, oh, I thought I was. John Stewart's a classic, like, oh, I'm like, but we're, we should be together. We're like, no, no, no. And they told you in BLM times, by the way, if you paid attention, but you dismissed them because you're like, you, you don't let. I'm telling you, that was the end of it because now a bunch of all this woke shit, you know, people go to the left and and I don't believe we. I think it's a puppet show. I don't think we have any real thing besides the the corporation, uh, but. They would push this shit like uh, like we're all in this together, and uh, and then that's when you started seeing the 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 uh, Instagrams of like I stood with immigrants because blah 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 I stood with BLM because and I stood with gays and now I stand alone because I am a Jew. Did you see that getting yeah. passed around? Yeah. And that's the moment when I knew right there it was like oh you're like that ADL piece of shit was shocked. Well, you're not going to back us up all the way on this thing. We followed you on all your crazy shit. What? ADL thing with who? The guy from the ADL was furious on October 7th when they went on Warpath because the Wokies weren't supporting Israel. He, the ADL supported that like that kind of bullshit we just watched. Right. They supported that. Right. They supported BLM. Right. So now this is how you repay us by not going along with everything we're doing? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying woke died on that day. It should have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. It's, because, it's, yeah. People understand that it's just crazy now. It's the just, it's just yeah. tribal. It's very tribal and it's very, it's like even in the right, like look what's going on with Candace Owens and Ben I, Shapiro. Dude. Like what did she say? I want to know what was she, what she was fired for. Because was it criticism of Israel? Was it, I mean, did she show that Edward Snowden video that he put up on Twitter that shows them oh, maybe. drone bombing those kids that are those men, I should say, unarmed people that were walking towards the rubble that yeah. clearly weren't causing yeah. any danger to anybody? Yeah, right. They just bombed them. Yeah, no, it's your duty. It's just like for Biden or whoever you like, you're supposed to cover up for them. Because but the have, whole thing yeah. is like they're always saying they're only targeting Hamas and everybody else is a casualty. Well, if those guys are just unarmed civilians and they're walking alone, that's what they appear to be. Dresden. And you just blast them from the sky with robots. This is the tragedy of war. Yeah, this is insane. And no one knows what to think now because if you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is okay as long as we're doing it. And that is what we're saying. And if you're saying that from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust or your your people, your tribe went through the fucking Holocaust and now you're willing to do it? I hope the irony is not lost on you. It, 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 it's so nuts. It's so hard to imagine that someone where a, cul- a culture, like a country was like officially founded in what, 47? 48. 48? Okay. Officially founded. So that's so recent. <laughs> and, you, and you guys are willing to do what was done to you that led you to believe that you needed to start your own country? You're yeah. willing to do that at least on a small scale in Gaza? Like, there's nothing left. If you see the videos, let's see, let's see some recent footage of Gaza. Because they – have they stopped bombing? I know people are calling for ceasefires. Well, you know, I, you know what I think is going to help? In San Francisco, the city council all got together with masks on, and they voted on a ceasefire. And uh, then they <laughs> all they danced. Yes, they won. <laughs> the ceasefire passed. The ceasefire passed, which is really important. And uh, <laughs> when it job, passed, guys. they were all these fucking freaks with blue hair all dancing around with masks on. Please show that, because it's one of the most wonderful things on the internet. These people are <sighs> swimming in a sea of human shit with needles flying by like logs on a raging river. With the wrong kind of mask on. Everyone's in a tent. Robberies are out of control. The fucking stores have all moved out of your town. And what'd you vote on? (laughs) You vote on a ceasefire in Gaza. You gotta see it though. You gotta see it. Watch, let's... Okay, it's so preposterous it must be readily available. Unless the Google is trying to hide the truth. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of how our own government, instead of fixing any of this, just gave all our money to Ukraine. It's very similar. The concern for somewhere else that's not your immediate area, you should probably, you yeah. know, like clean your room, like Jordan Peterson says. Yeah. America, the the Pentagon, they need, how about we clean our room? How about you clean your fucking room, bitch? 
There's yeah. people all over the fucking floor. Like, yeah. well, like, well, how about when they when Xi Jinping came to San Francisco and oh they did clean God. it? Can he come they more often? They did clean it. Hey, can you get an apartment there? You, <laughs> if Xi Jinping got a penthouse in San Francisco, you, yeah. it would clean up the whole problem. Hey, buddy, when are you coming back? What a baller Xi Jinping is. He can force the enemy to clean up their horrible city. He didn't have to force. Okay. They well, wanted so look to. At the, look at these freaks. Look at these freaks. Anti-Palestinian sentiments, Islamophobia, and xenophobia. But not everyone agrees with this resolution. <laughs> but people but are fighting. Them, but look at them all dancing around. Well, they fucking. They all have masks on. Look at these fucking crackpots. Oh, those are the right masks. Yeah, the fucking the, K and the face the fuck they are. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these fucking people. They're literally insane. All of them mentally ill. Wearing masks. But those liberals, they're fucking blue to the death. To the they, they they're, in, they're in a full-on suicide cult. They've watched the decay of their city, and they like it. They're yeah. happy. Until they get personally attacked, and then they wake up. But until they get yeah, personally right. attacked, yep. they are all in on equity. And look at all these fucking freaks. Oh they, my God. they have the Palestinian uh, traditional scarves on and shit. God, look at all these the, people are such crackpots. It's look awesome. at all the dead eggs. And I'm, that's just the guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many of those guys are guys? Uh, I mean, who knows what's going on with that? Group we got of three generations for it's those big head gray aliens. That's if we're wondering what are they turning into. I wonder how many trans men become conservative. They start juicing them up with testosterone. They go, you know what? These fucking guys are making a point. You know, it is all about discipline and hard work. <laughs> like if they, I wonder what what like the political leanings of trans men are. So Reddit comment on the video says they're covering their faces on purpose so they don't get identified. Oh, shut the fuck up! Those people wear those goddamn things everywhere. And why kill the fun, Jamie? Why even Thanks pull that up? Why even inform hey, me of the truth? When these it's just people made a difference. Can we celebrate I, it? <laughs> I'm trying to uh, have a biased worldview like the New York Times. Just yeah. in a different direction. <laughs> Should I cut my subscription off? I want the worldview I'm entitled to. Listen, don't show up wearing scarves to be paid attention to and then want to cover your face, you fucking coward. That's part of the problem. It's part of the problem is everybody wants to be performative, but nobody wants to take the heat. You put your fucking face out there, God damn it! I, I wish, this is nonsense, yeah. well, and people should know that you're a nonsense person. But they do know because they know that San Francisco is imploding. So you know just by watching the city. That's why they move there, so they can fucking <laughs> like be a nonsense person. Well, they probably were there forever. There's a lot of people that have been there forever. But uh, then there's also like benefits to living there if you're a homeless person. They actually pay you money. They pay you money. There's a lot of services. Like they're just. There's a giant goddamn industry that's involved in homeless, and that's one of the things yeah, that right. Colion Noir um, uncovered on the show. It's not he, Colin? Well, his name is Collins. His real name is Collins. Yeah. Uh, so, Colion. I, Colion is his uh, oh. Instagram. Oh, I didn't know that. So anyway, he went to San Francisco, and he was like, what is it, a funding issue? Like, what's going on? And he's like, this is crazy. And one of his, the people he's talking to was a lawyer, and he's a lawyer as well. Oh. And so when the, the guy was talking to him, he was saying, no, 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 you, you don't understand. It's a scam. Like, there's a giant industry, and there's all these people that make hundreds of thousands a year working in the homeless department. They don't want to clean up of the course, homeless. Of course. Because then their jobs go away, and if they're the only people in charge of cleaning up the homeless, it's basically like those Boeing mechanics that mm. get to sign off on their own work. Like, oh, yeah, it's great. I did a great job. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why fucking planes are crashing out of the sky, kid. But when you, that's what the whistleblower thing was all about. No, I, I knew. Uh, the that's what the whistleblower was insinuating, was that they, they, they have done a horrible disservice by not having safety inspectors and instead letting the mechanics sign off on their own work. They're trying to save money and cut corners. And by doing that, he's saying this is super fucking dangerous. And he was saying yeah. all these problems that they found with planes. And then he decided that what he had done was so horrible that he needed to leave this earth. Because he felt guilty for felt, being a snitch. Yeah, he um, also disparaged a great company. And uh, definitely wasn't My grandfather killed. worked for them. He definitely wasn't killed. Uh, no, well, people, a lot of suicide. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I've been sniffling. Yeah, yeah that, that one was a fun one, that story. That's an important suicide. Like, if you're going to commit suicide, definitely do it before you testify. Well, you know, remember the guy <laughs> that figured out how they were bringing crack into the hood, just as the rapper said, and he shot himself twice in the head because he felt so guilty? No, <laughs> you're, um, you're conflating a few things. You're, um, you're thinking about... Gary Webb, no? Oh, that's Gary Webb. I, thought, I was talking to, to Michael Rupert. He was another one. Oh, oh no! Yeah, well, he was the guy that. that but Gary yeah. Webb did that as well. 
but Michael Rupert was actually a Los Angeles narcotics investigator. And he's talking in the uh, yes. in the assembly. That's the guy who, who says right. that. Right. It was on C-SPAN, right? right? Yeah. We, well, I'm talking about Gary Webb because we had a quote from right, him. Right, right, right. Gary Webb was the guy yeah. who shot himself in the head twice. It happens. Well, if you do it once, you probably should finish the job. <laughs> hey, if you finish. fuck up, you blow the top of your head I off, like to like, oh my god, I'm still alive. I fuck do a this. starter shot to see if I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's I like, see if wow. I want to go all the Wake way. Because first of all, you know how hard you get knocked out if you shot yourself in the head? Uh, it's not like you're just going to like be fine. I don't know. You're I would never out. do that. Well, yeah. he goes, he has a quote where he goes, I realized when he was reporting on that story, um, I had never reported anything important in my entire life <laughs> until that. Because when that happens, when you shoot yourself twice in the head, that means you did report on a real thing, and sometimes you had no idea. Uh, over and over, I hear from people like Jay Bhattacharya, the doctor, yeah. where they find something wrong and they think everyone's going to be happy they found the problem. You know, because mm -hmm. this is important. And no, it's bad for business. Just like the homeless thing you said, that's everything. Yeah. Everything is incentivized to keep the thing going. And exactly. Not, and it's it, all it, about yeah. money. And that, that's the, the number one curse of our culture and humanity but it's also like the thing that makes people want to fight against it which makes good people rise up so you got like a bunch of factors that are happening at the same time and it probably forces more of these good people to be more good and more just because they realize like hey there really is evil in the world you know there, there god's really anvil for sure yeah yeah there's real con what'd you say god god's anvil to hammer you yeah. out on yeah yeah it's like it's almost like you need something i think there's always been something that people have been battling against. There's always been evil and good, at least in some sense of it. It's just it's get it gets so confusing when the good b does evil to justify yeah. fighting the evil. It's like, okay, well, what are you? Are you in a rush to, to kill Hamas? Well, you have to kill everybody else too. Like, How about just truth and lies? Just tr yeah. tell the truth, like because good and evil. I, I mean, we, I. I I believe in those things abstractly, but it's such a vague thing to say. Right. And there's depends on what side you're on. There's apparently radically different views on what constitutes that. Like that poor woman who's being persecuted in sports that you attacked earlier because of your phobia. Yes. That was evil. <laughs> that, That's evil. You should feel ashamed that you said yeah. <laughs> that she can't. I look like I said. Right now, it's gotten so crazy that all you got to do is is just not think about. How will the? Am I being a loose cannon by just pointing at the thing that's in front of my fucking face? Right. Just do that. Everybody could just start by doing that, by not, you know, don't. All my friend back when. Uh, the thing is, is all these DEI the scores that these corporations have. There's a giant percentage of the population that's under Sauron's eye, all day long. It's called slavery. It is kind of a form of mental slavery. It's not, you could always quit. It's, the, the it's credit not real it's slavery, the credit system. But there's something about it that's so creepy. They're enforcing, for the first time in the history of our culture, they're enforcing an ideology on the masses. And they're changing our definitions of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, including men competing against women. And they've dabbled in minor attracted persons. They're dabbling <laughs> in people who are two spirit yeah. or elf kin or fucking. They're dabbling in the most extreme weird stuff it's just to sort do. of like prime you and yes. get you ready for furries. <laughs> furries are fine. I will never accept them. Well, never. Furries are having a good time and they're dressing up like chipmunks. I'll tell you what. Uh, when Duncan and I did a podcast as furries, I got my respect for for the furry community. Because oh. it's hard to keep those things on. I yeah. can't imagine fucking with those things on. It gets hot. And this is a cool studio, you know? The temperature's controlled. This is so gross. You put that thing on, dude, and it, you... You know what a diaper furry is? Yeah, they, they shit. And That's they, the lowest form of furry. Oh, the the regular ones shit in litter boxes, No, right? I hunt them, so I'm going to tell you <laughs> what to look for. You'll smell them coming. Oh, now, Joe, I have a job, as you know... Uh, uh, turning off people's smart houses for being racist. So the way, <laughs> I, the way I see it, it's a good thing. Want to hear a furry story? Yeah. So um, this is a two-parter. No, but yes. So one, <laughs> I will tell you, I know. One, uh, we were in uh, Pittsburgh for a UFC, and we just randomly happened to get there on the day there's a furry convention. So as we are driving- What are the odds? Okay. Crazy odds. As we're driving, 
from the airport. I'm in the rental car going, what the fuck is going on, dude? You Why know, are there so you, many mascots? No. You didn't know what furries no, were. No fucking idea. No idea. So finally we get to the hotel. The hotel bar, the manager guy, explains to us there's a furry convention. What you year guys is this? got lucky. <sighs> Quite a few years ago. What a way to find out. At least, I mean, it's probably in the neighborhood of 20 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. And you just. So this, say- no, yeah. the, no, the UFC popped in 2005. It was probably after that. Any diapers? So maybe, no, I'm, I'm, I think I might be off. Maybe 15 years ago or four, 14, 15, anyway, quite a while, at least a decade ago, a long time ago. So <laughs> I'm not that hip on furries. You I didn't understand. Be. You absolutely should. I get be. there and the guy tells me that he had a request. For someone to put a litter box in the hall. He goes, you're, first of all, he goes, you're really lucky you guys made reservations in advance. Because everything is sold out because of the furry convention. And I'm like, what? So he explains they all want their food delivered in bowls on the floor. And these people are all furries together in this one hotel. So they're acting out. They're in the lobby together. They're all furries. Everywhere we go, there's furries. They're sicker than Cosby. It was fun. And <laughs> I mean, they're nice. I don't care if you dress like a fucking squirrel. But the bowl thing is you, you got to participate in my weird act. Well, it's a request. You know, you put the food in the bowl, I'm paying money. Just you know, I'm a freak. I'll Just do put it. The, I'll put it on the ground. You I'll give you an extra that. 20. Yeah. So, uh, but he told me that they wanted to put a litter box. One of the guys requested a litter box in the lobby so mm-hmm. that they could piss in it. And he's like, no, you can't have a fucking litter box in the lobby. There's like sanitation issues. But he's like, dude, it's so crazy. So anyway. Years go by, and uh, I'm uh, hanging out with a friend of mine in Utah, in the mountains, elk hunting, and he tells me that his wife is uh, a teacher at this school, and that one of the parents had requested putting a litter box in the girl's bathroom because the girl identifies as a furry, so or a cat, or whatever. So I go, what? Are you fucking serious? So I talk about that on the podcast and then people call bullshit. They say there's no evidence. There's no evidence, but the attack the 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 amount of people that were calling bullshit was crazy. Yeah. And they were angry and it got connected to trans stuff. So somehow or another, me telling a story my friend told me that his wife told him about this public school that she worked at where they were in Utah where they were saying that a mother was requesting a litter box so stochastic terrorism uh, so I go did. back to him and I say okay listen man I need to know <laughs> yeah. like what ask your wife what is what actually happened okay. so the wife didn't work at that school anymore this because it was uh, like a year or so ago the, or maybe even more. So anyway, the wife says, what I recall was that a mother had requested that a litter box be installed in the girls' room. And I said, was a litter box ever installed? I don't think so. Okay. Or I don't know. Okay, well, that's it. But the idea that people wouldn't want to shit in a litter box if you're dressing up like a furry, does why is that so far-fetched that everyone's so angry? It's not far-fetched. And saying that I'm pumping out misinformation. When it's not I far-fetched. talked to a fucking manager of a hotel who told me personally he got a request to put a litter box yeah. in the lobby during a furry Because it's true. That's why. The, the, but the why truth. are they so aggressive about that one? That seems so weird. I don't care if you want to wear a fucking chipmunk outfit and have sex with each other. Have a good time. If that's what you're both into, who cares? For the same reason. But why yeah. is it weird? If you Are you saying that there's kids, there's no kids out there that are so mentally ill that they want to use a litter box? Because I don't no, think No, I'm saying shut right. up about it. That's what I'm saying. Don't talk about it. Right. I'm but, transferring them to another parish. But I don't think you're right. I don't think anybody would would be willing to say that there's no one out there who's not mentally ill enough to want to use a litter box. Because of course there is. There's a spectrum of mental illness. And well, I'm you, saying it's not mentally ill. It's fine. It's a Do you identity. understand the depth of what? Yes. Well, that's what gets really weird about the whole minor attracted persons thing. They're trying to slip that in as an identity. And people say, why are you talking about this? This is not real. No, it is real. You have to understand it seems so crazy. It seems crazy to me. I don't want to bring it up. I don't want to talk about it because it makes you look like a fucking loon. That's a good point. But it is real. And there's recordings. There's video of politicians expressing how we have to recognize their identity yeah. as minor attracted them. persons. I won't look at it. I've seen it. It's infuriating. And it's the same kind of people that you expect to be 
using those New York Times Instagram videos <laughs> where, they're, where, they're, where, they're, where they're talking about the story they're covering. It's the same kind of people. I, uh, it's yeah. cult members. When you said you could imagine what they look like, it reminded me of like back when, uh, remember like all those famous nudes came out on fucking the fapping it was called? Yes, on yes. The new, on the news. Yes. And um, so I was watching some video came on my stream on YouTube about it and I and I'm looking and they're talking about, you know, they hacked and got their stuff and their, their communications. And then immediately the guy, like the one guy they got arrested, and he looked so much like what I imagined. He looked like, <laughs> he looked like they, an AI read my mind and drew him on the screen. Like, yeah. It's amazing. And they're all, there's, the big thing is uh, autism is apparently the biggest, is huge. And uh, so shit like furries and there's all these malleable people that are like they're real smart about like making like lists and iceberg lists of shit right but they're like two-dimensional like sailor moon brain that's why i asked you this is old this reference mm -hmm. but uh chris chan do you not have you not there's ken burns documentaries about it that guy or he's a woman now but look <laughs> dude what, the, what are you talking about you went in 30 different directions uh, well, you, what is okay. chris chan what it's the most documented human Ever, ever, never heard of him, right? No. And then this is such an old ass reference. Like if somebody was younger, you're like, yeah, I know about Chris Chan. Dude. But w when I first saw- Do you saw know about Chris Chan, Jamie? I can't say I've never seen the picture, but I don't really know the reference. No, I'm looking at, um, it's not- Okay. So what is the story? It's too long to get into, but this, just what I'm gonna say he is, or you should look it up yourself on, uh, there's there's like a genius, Gino Samuel, this guy, Jibby, great documentaries. Um, he's the singularity. The thing that Ray Kurzweil would talk about of the in the future when our technology and we merge and whatever. Right. That guy or woman, he's the fucking singularity. That's where it goes. And so all the things you're talking about. Singularity of woke. Singularity of technology and humanity. It's like this weird autistic, always online fusion uh. that shapes your, f and, but you got to begin with the right clay, which is someone autistic, not being raised right. Right, right. Um, and. So every phase of it you can watch and at some point someone told him that you can't like dude it's unbelievable I know I know exactly what you're talking about it sounds crazy they, somebody convinced him you can't be held responsible for your personal actions if you transition because he's doing wild shit over like Sonic's arm color being changed like really out of control you, I, I can't even you gotta just see it yourself um, and so now I'm just gonna cut, cut the end he ended up uh, raping his senile mother and uh, going to jail here's where the story ends it's like an inverse Jesus. <laughs> like, instead of coming out of a virgin, he rapes his senile mother. It's, oh, God. He's the singularity. That's what it is. So they remember how they promised? They go, oh, it's going to be amazing. You're not going to die. Even in Black Mirror, you'll be stored in a hard drive <laughs> right. and live a great, your best lesbian life. No, that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be this slow, like, just a person who is not, it's not, they're not all there and they can be conditioned into anything by outside influences. Right. And, and, he, yeah. and here's the question, like what contributing factors are leading to an increase in the amount of people that are autistic? Anime. <laughs> <laughs> Starbucks. I got one word. Anime what? Starbucks. <laughs> like, what is it? What are the factors? How much of it is environmental? How much of it is it people having p kids at an older age? Which Do you think seems it's like uh, contribute to it? The Michael Keaton Batman, when the Joker talks in, you know, people would would die laughing, and then Batman figured out it's not the makeup or the shampoo or the something. It's when you use combinations of them. Yeah, the chemical. it's probably a combination. So my guess it's like that. Yeah, it's probably. I'm a not combination. a doctor. It's, it's definitely probably a combination, but it seems like some medications seem to cause it. And no one wants to say that. And it's fucking bananas to watch people do mental gymnastics for pharmaceutical drug companies just to sort of substantiate and validate their own decisions that they've made. Joe, I know. Instead of just looking at it. In New York, I met three people, three adults, that all told me they were the first kid ever to be prescribed Prozac. Three of them. It could be any of them. Yes, they all look like Woody Allen, even the chick. <laughs> <laughs> you know who told me he was on um, Prozac from the time he was a little kid? Henry Rollins. Really? Yeah. He was just fucking... Gah! They had him on Prozac when he was really young. 
And they, they I think they kind of cooked them. I thought it was on Ritalin. Oh, that's right. Oh, Ritalin. What's oh, the difference yeah. between Ritalin? Ritalin is more so, of a cons- speed. You're that's right, Adderall. Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's Ritalin like a- is basically Adderall. It's, it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's the ADHD thing. Yeah. I Prozac think, is you're depressed, right? That's a SSRI or something. No, maybe I don't think a, it's an SSRI. Is it's Prozac the one before, an SSRI? It's the one before Paxil, which is not the... I, look, Apparently, give it to your kid. They can't... Princess something. Leah loved Prozac so much that she wanted to be... Uh, she wanted to be cremated and then put into an urn that's shaped like a Prozac pill. Was she just being funny? That is kind of funny. being funny. It's that's hilarious. very funny. Uh, so selective serotonin reuptake. Oh, so uh, it yeah, is. I, 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 yeah. So that's Prozac. That's the term. Flux, flu, o, x, fluoxetine. Fluoxetine. So that is Prozac. So it is an SSRI. Why does the Prozac one make people more silly though? It seems to make people more speedy. It does. Yeah, I know people. A few people that have been on that one. That one makes you a little speedy. Like where you're like, whoa, what's going on? I don't want to mention names. <laughs> but, you know, this, uh, <laughs> they get a little speedy, but um, the Ritalin one is like straight up speed. And the that's, kids on that's it? what Rollins was on. Yeah, yeah dude, the, the kids on it. My yeah. friend, I got a friend that uh, he's from Georgia. They put it. What, he's a little kid. OK, mm-hmm. he was put on 60 milligrams of Adderall a day as like an eight year old. Oh, my God. Do you know how I mean, that is like uh, uh, that's so high. That seems so crazy. Dude, that, I, the panic attacks I've had from very small <laughs> amounts of Adderall. <laughs> or a little kid, that must have, and he, like, you know, he's a real aversion to any of that kind of shit because of. Of course. Because he's like, uh, uh, the who's the guy Johnny Depp played? The uh, Whitey, He's like Whitey Bulger. Like he, yeah. They tried out drugs on him, and now he hates all drugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, Whitey I only Bulger like murder. was a part of the Harvard LSD studies, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, isn't that weird how all these things, uh, it's really odd, I forgot it? about that Whitey Bulger was a part of that. Yeah, all these major people were. I, it's, you know, you know how they say ex- extraordinary claims? Yeah. You need extraordinary evidence? Okay, I agree with you. Um, at this point, it would be extraordinary to uh, claim that they're not lying to you all the time. And that thing you're talking about where people don't even want to talk. No, we don't even talk about this. Someone asked for a litter box. Don't you know we're at war and there's a war on us? So we got to no, overlook this? No, this is before the war stuff. This is quiet. But they were just saying I was a liar. Like, look. I didn't lie. I told the story that my friend told me that his yeah. wife told him. I did never suspect that it was going to get the reaction that it got, though. What do you think they look like? And then like? it got connected to trans stuff. I think they look like New York Times reporters. But it's not. <laughs> it's the thing is, it's like that. It got connected with so. I like. Mm-hmm. What are we saying here? We're talking about a person that thinks they're a cat. Are you allowed to do that now? Like, what do you? What do you? What are we sneaking the door in on? You, James Lindsay. You know, he's got good videos about, because I didn't go to school to learn these important concepts. Uh-huh. Uh, and so, I, queer theory. <laughs> oh, I've seen these. So, he has a great thing that explains it. The whole point of it, and you could kind of tell what the deal was. The point of queer theory was not, it, it's against being gay or trans. The point of queer theory is to destroy the concept of normal right. expressly in it. Right. We're oppositional to normality so that's why you hear like that's heteronormative that's why they're saying gynophiles instead of you're straight what a uh, downgrade it is right out of the orwell playbook to change the definitions change the words <laughs> it's right out of the book and he everyone, didn't write it as a playbook <laughs> everyone is but everyone's following it but everyone is just completely pretending that that doesn't exist well, just important people with good jobs. Gynophiles? A <laughs> bunch men's of gynophiles? Health, there's, there's, a men's health, there's a men's health article. Uh, there's an, but gynophiles second Gynophiles! Act. Wait, there's Imagine two. There's two. That, that another one. The majority oh. of the population yeah. has a mental illness. Oh, that didn't take long. <laughs> that didn't take long, didn't? Oh, oh gynosexual, <laughs> gynosexual, and gynophile. Hilarious. Are and there's gynosexual? dispute over what it means. Are you gynophile? Are you ew. fucking fascist? You're crazy. Ew, ew. Ew, he's a gynophile. See, there's file on it. Imagine <laughs> if like, put, it got file? to a point where you weren't supposed to tell someone if you're a guy or girl. You're supposed to figure it out in the bedroom, and it was like a surprise. Like, oh, a dick. Oh, I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> you find it. This is what a pussy is? Yeah. Looks like someone put an M80 in a cat's asshole. Oh, that too. <laughs> the fake ones. But you wouldn't have to do that if you could just keep your dick. If you could keep your dick and still be 100% a woman, I think we'd have less of those surgeries. We well, can. That might be the best way to stop those surgeries. 
Because the, back in the, the day, they'll stop you from orgasming. Oh, so, so I, I know I have two friends that have transitioned. But back in the day, my friend in Art Institute, um, because everybody, oh, what are you going to cut your dick off? And my friend was like, no, most most trans do not do that because exactly what you just said. Yeah, it's new. This is new where you get the bottom surgery, which I got to warn everybody, they haven't perfected it yet. If you if you want to not know some shit, you think a cat litter box at schools are disturbing request to know about? Look up the maintenance of that shit and yeah. maybe just think about keeping the dick like the classic trans way. This is an autistic thing. Yeah. You've had people on explaining it. Yeah. And so Abigail that's Schreier. and the, it's the pharma dude, bef, never mind people's sexuality, besides that queer theory bullshit. It's far, it's surgery and like the 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 ethics of plastic surgeons, like what they did to Michael Jackson and Madonna's faces. Yeah. Imagine that on your kid's dick. Exactly. Or their tits. Then they're not gonna think your kids any differently than they think of some lady who's getting their sixth nose job. Yeah. They it's don't yes care. and they improv yeah. yes and get oh, another you one. We need that. We're not gonna wait. We're not gonna wait until you go to puberty. They got the ethics of veterinarians. We don't want you going through yeah. puberty. Like we don't want uh, There's how, no evidence. How the fuck do you know? You don't even know this kid. Well, you, we'll find out. The whole thing is so insane, and when the lawsuits start rolling in, that's like one of the things is interesting. Is like New York Times started writing articles about detransitioners. That's right, and that's when it's getting serious. When these people feel like they have to step up and make articles about that's running a sinking ship. Uh -huh. That's the rats fleeing the well, sinking ship. I never said you should do that. Someone online, I forget who it was, commented on Twitter. This is because the trial lawyers are now getting involved. Finally. Yeah, but that's probably the only thing it's going to take. Also, their kids got, you know, like that the one chick from the New York Times, her kids uh, developmentally slowed from masking. Mm. And she was a big time shut up, shut up. She was a yeah. big uh, Xi Jinping about Lena things. Lena Wen, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. And then she goes, oh, it affected you. Like when Dick Cheney realized that well, lesbianism's that. cool because he had a lesbian daughter. Oh. But not only that, yeah. but then she started talking about how there's real evidence um, that most of the people that died and that they were called COVID deaths are not from COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And we so knew she that a long time ago. That. But she was talking about it on CNN. They were like, what are you saying? Like, you, She goes, I estimate the death to be about 30% of what the reported death rate is. Uh, uh, like, you're supposed to have had, at this point, if you're following the science and not doing your 10 shots by now. Is it 10? It's up. It was eight when I was making fun of this months ago and imagine now it's 10 up, imagine if you're really updated how many people are actually updated I have should bring them in here their probably teeth are falling out the fucking want, eyes are glowing do you, <laughs> how much time do you have I left want, do you have track marks from vaccine you have like <laughs> literal pink eye you're you're fucking hemorrhaging inside your eyeballs how many um shots if you're current with your covid vaccine how many shots would you have received if you started getting them in what was it July of 2020 or Good luck the, with that search. Whatever fucking year it was. Was it 2021? When did they start rolling them out? Not soon enough. It wasn't 2020. <laughs> you didn't need to take all that time with the testing. We, we'll try uh, it. Well, the va the best one was the ones that they released, the bivalent ones, where they didn't have any human testing. Well, like, I guess us. they actually did, didn't they? Yeah, In the law. It ended up, yeah. yeah. Turns out it doesn't work at all. Not only does it not work oh. at all, it actually works worse. Well, good thing you can't sue. Yeah. Hey, That's good thing weird. you can't sue the one drug. Isn't they're probably weird? more honest because you can't weird? sue. Isn't that weird? Isn't Whoa. it weird that you can just like lie to people and you could force people to take things and no. then you could hide the side effects and you can't sue them? That seems, I don't want to say it seems corrupt because I, that seems like yeah, I'm, that would be I'm wrong. out of line. You'd be way the fuck out of line. Yeah, That's like saying there, somebody asked for a litter box at their kid's school. <laughs> yeah, that's out of line. Shut up. It's out of line. It's out of line. <laughs> It's out of line. There's yeah. no way they would do that to you over and over and over and over and over yeah, and over right. and over again. And you keep falling for it like fucking Charlie Brown going for that football with Lucy. I'm not smart. I'm that Charlie Brown stupid. Yeah. How do you still go take the kick now at this yeah. point? God damn it. You tackle Lucy. Like, I don't... He, <laughs> Take her out. When are you going to do what Allah commanded us to do? Yeah, Allah does not allow Lucy to play games with you. You're supposed to be able to beat her. You look at her with her uncovered hair pulling a man's football away. Allah is a, a sign of the fucking feminism rise. Or, or rather, um, Lucy is a sign of the feminism rise. Allah does not want that. 
Um, well, if I, Lucy's like dominating Charlie Brown, Allah would not. I be think into Allah that. just wants balance you for know? sure, but he definitely wouldn't want Lucy kicking Charlie Brown's ass. I mean, that would be uh, get the fuck out of here with that. This yeah. bitch needs to be put in her place. Uh, what was Charlie Brown's crimes though? Had he? <laughs> it depends what he had done. Good point. Charlie Brown was an infidel. So that might be like the worst punishment we have for you. Yeah, just be a, <laughs> a woman. By a woman. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a wo- it's perfect. A woman's gonna laugh at your dick. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's perfect. It's just I I just I'm concerned that it seems like all this stuff is accelerating to yeah, some sort of a boiling it. point. Do you love it? You want to know why? Why? Because my girlfriend's like ten or twelve years younger than me, so she has like hopes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I honey, ah! like, but. Uh, now that the ball, when the bomb hit, like I, I did drugs and drank and smoked for you know, these healthy motherfuckers. Like you're gonna die right with me. Oh, did you try to extend your life? We're all going together. I barely wore a condom. <laughs> That's what you're happy about that you fucked it's your so, life up, so it's fine. It's uh, in fact, if it doesn't end, I'll be like, oh shit, I should have handled my life better. Well, there's a lot of people that live like that, right? If the apocalypse never comes, like shit, all these preppers, like We're god now, damn, dude. I spend all my time canning peaches and shit. No, the, that's they're gonna be the be nice to them because pretty soon, yeah, they're gonna be the only ones. <laughs> they're gonna be the people that have like the ability to generate power with the sun. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. they figured out like zero grid. point energy in their backyard yeah. while you're the thing sticking is like, around with string theory. People don't understand like power's only gonna do so good if society goes down because there'll be no more communication. And right. That's the that's the great like what we are now is we're electronically connected to everybody. So you know how to get places, you know what's going on, you know the news, you know the weather, you know the fucking highways, you got a map, you I think a GPS. I do. You're just if you're if you have a cell phone that works and you're in a car and you are traveling in this country, you have an incredible resource. And then all of a sudden that's gone and you don't know where the fuck you are and no one has a map and no one knows how to read a map even if you fucking had it. And now, all of a sudden, the world is a mystery again, just like it was in the 1800s. The yeah. world's a mystery. Everything over that hill is who knows? It could be hostile Indians. I feel like it's who like fucking that. Knows? I feel like it's like that with all of the stuff. <laughs> I think yeah. it's. I don't. What in the fuck can you trust? Every time I find out a new thing, I'm like, I have to have like a period of PTSD time right, to but digest at least it. There's a possibility of finding out. My point yeah. is. If all that shit goes down, it's not going to matter if you have power because you're not going to have any communication. All it, It's yeah. going to be gone. Everyone within one generation is going to be a fucking moron again. No one's going to have any idea of what – they're going to have stories about what society used to be like. Yeah. And then – look, we, we have stories now from my generation of what it was like growing up with an answering machine. We had an answering machine. People would call and they'd yeah. leave a message. It was crazy. And you could call your own house and listen to the message. I it was pager. wild. I had a pager. What is it? The Old West? I had a pager. Yeah. Yeah. Joey Diaz had a pager forever. Like before, he, like he got a phone later than anybody. Dude, do you play a, I, do, I play, Jimmy had a show in um, Palm Springs, with, but it was at like a movie theater. You know, movie theaters will have. Yeah. Yeah. Like comedy and I, nights. And I'm in there. And I'm like, wow, this is like what, after the apocalypse, this is what this will be used for. <laughs> the, mo- the place right. with the old movies will just be a guy. <laughs> tell- and then, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, with a solar powered It microphone. felt like I was at the end, like, oh, we-, we had the apocalypse and this is how we're getting by. Dude, you got to realize, like, before Google, before internet searching, you had to take people's word for shit. You know, you people would just tell you things. You'd be like, what happened? Like, imagine you with your conspiracies, but existing pre-internet. Like you, you don't even know well, we what happened Bible, to Haiti. Joe. Do you know what we did in Haiti? Like everybody, like what this well, fucking Kurt's crazy. You know what's fucking sad, dude? Like, first of all, I, we haven't even gotten to my conspiracies. Dee! Like my conspiracies. What's the big one? That I, my biggest one? Yeah, uh, I a hundred percent believe Eric. Uh, the dude for the the Raytheon thing that uh, whistleblower that came out during the little titty peak of UFOs we had over the la- over the summer when they were like, you know they. They announced UFOs are real, right? Uh, which is fucking crazy, by the way. Right. Uh, and no, I mean, yeah, I know you would give a shit, or like friends would. But it's not enough information. It's it's really annoying the amount of teasing of it. But meanwhile, the Titanic submarine imploded around the same time. Everybody knew that's you know, be like, oh, it's a distraction. No, that's 
horseshit for nerds, a distraction is the Titanic submarine story or putting a butter dick on the Bud Light can. That's a quality America distraction, okay? Like, this stuff, they got you... Pr- just like Haiti, Haiti and UFOs, you, you program not to you're care. You're going all over the place. Raytheon UFO, that's what I asked you about. What are you talking about? Raytheon The, the dude I was texting you about. Which one? Eric Hecker, the guy that came out in the Raytheon that said in Antarctica. Right, you got to tell people what the fuck you're talking oh, about. I'm the sorry. People that are I, listening have no I've, idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I thought this is just that we're hanging out, not yeah. doing a show. It's okay. I'm just trying to get Someone's you back on track. Someone's going to clip it. So this guy is the this is the guy that was on the Sean Ryan show, right? Yes, yes, yes. So he's talking about how he was a, a I guess he was a fireman out there and yeah, yeah. He lives in Alaska and he was saying there's direct energy weapons. Do you know about so? I, oh, you have a lot of physicists on the show, mm-hmm. so I follow a lot of that, and uh, so I already knew about the ice cube neutrino detector just from following uh-huh. science channels. Because without any of this, let's stuff. listen to what he says. Because it okay. sounds so kooky. Are we allowed to? That was the whole podcast. I gotta find the. I probably, I'm looking for the clip. I think. Oh, that was a whole podcast. Yeah, I think. That, okay. Let me see. But any, anyway, it's interesting because I'm listening to the guy talk. Here's a TikTok <sighs> video. Well, this is still four minutes long. Okay, but just give us a little something. Third party contractor for the National Science Foundation. I function in a dual role capacity as a tradesman and a firefighter. My responsibilities required me to be more informed than most of my crew and offered me complete access to the facilities. What I learned from this unique experience needs to be shared with the entire world. The technology at the South Pole Station certainly can do what it is presented as its primary purposes and unfortunately much more. The ice cube neutrino detector is presented as a passive listening device for the purposes of the science as presented. But I'm going to skip right through the chase, folks. Uh, I have provided documentation that proves that the 5,160, what they call DOMs, that are embedded in the ice can actually transmit at 2,047 volts each. That gives us a long list of things to consider. It is effectively a multifaceted directed energy weapons platform that I will uh, list rapidly a few things that it can do. Vehicle detection. We're learning that these off-world craft, on-world craft, ours or other nations are also emitting neutrinos. So this makes the South Pole Station effectively an air traffic control station for this new level of equipment that nobody's discussing. Mm. In addition to the ability to detect neutrinos and the exotic vehicles, I have provided documentation that shows that this is also a system for faster than light communications. In the past, Gary McKinnon has hacked NASA, found the off-world fleet, the list of captains, and it's apparent that if we have faster than light vehicles moving throughout the system, we're going to need faster than light communications. This is that facility. Unfortunately, I have other bad news. The season that I was there, 2010 to 2011, we converted from Uh, construction to operations and maintenance in both the elevated station and the detector array. Unfortunately, when they first fired it up, that was when we had the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. There's two incidental shots before they were able to target it correctly. This is an earthquake generating device as well. This is the weapons of war that we have to deal with now and what Raytheon's hiding. No. Uh, Remember uh, Havana Syndrome? But don't don't neutrino so if it's a neutrino detector and a neutrino projector don't neutrinos no, they're not just, projecting them I don't no think. what no. is it projecting then if, it, it's, if it's going uh, 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 extreme frequencies so like elf and all that oh, shit it's, okay so it detects yeah. neutrinos mm-hmm. and then it, it projects something else so it does a it has a different thing it does this it can frequency. be used for many applications so the detector detects neutrinos right. that kind of makes sense like, why would you give That's a fuck offic- about... Yeah. But here's the question. Like, why would you give a fuck to spend so much money to detect neutrinos in space? But if you say, oh, but these UFOs emit neutrinos, like, oh. And you can es- eventually use them. Because otherwise, you have to be able to m- track something that instantaneously appears yeah. and disappears. Well, Air the, traffic okay. control for UFOs makes sense. The legit, when I'd watch about Ice Cube, when it first came out, nothing with this, that was the reason it caught my interest 
was, but for some reason, there's neutrinos that are coming out of the earth and not from space. Uh. Uh, so then, so I'll remember these little details and every day is like goddamn Kaiser Soze, I figured out. I'm just I, sitting there. I and thought it, neutrinos just go right through everything. That's right. Yeah. But uh, look, I don't know how that would when be. When a neutrino interacts with the Antarctic ice, it creates other particles. In this event graphic, a muon was created that traveled through the detector almost at the speed of light. The pattern, the amount of light recorded by the ice cube sensors indicate the particle's direction and energy. Wow. So I get how you'd be interested in like finding out like the rays from space and what's mm -hmm. going on. But also if they're you got a dual purpose and you actually know that this can detect whatever the fuck these things mm -hmm. are what do you think those things are and what do you think that uh, what is detecting no oh. the U uaps ufos do you think that a lot of them are ours yeah a lot of them right i'm sure a lot of yeah. them are ours but maybe some of them aren't where will we get that technology from right where will we get that right because the that you know but the tic tac thing is so boring but it's a fascinating topic um those things appearing back in the 50s that we didn't invent that in the fucking whatever whenever they first saw them we didn't invent yeah, that no, back no then. the thing is like when you have that guy that first started calling them flying saucers because they were skipping across the sky like right. no one had shape. no one had that technology back then no one had the technology to fly something at insane rates of speed incredible maneuverability that's shaped like a disc and, that didn't exist. So well, yeah. at some point in time, it wasn't ours because we had propeller planes. Well, the, yeah. I, the idea that we had these weapons of war and our weapons of war were propeller planes and we would open up the bottom <laughs> of it. It's basically like a reverse convertible and just drop a bomb out of it. That's what they, they could look down. We, uh, you could literally, you go, Dwee! you would just like figure out, drop it now. Wee! Yeah. Wee! Boom. We just save a bunch of Nazis just to figure out how to get beyond that, you know? But let's say it's uh, no, uh, they didn't find. Like let's say they did find something that wasn't us. What, do you think they'd tell you about it, or do you think they'd hide it for I don't know eighty years, like the JFK files that are sixty years? The yeah, rest you of the see JFK. what Trump said about the JFK files? No, what he was talking to. What's that guy's name? Napolitano. Oh yeah, Ranger. yeah. And he said, uh, he goes, "Why did you break that promise?" Yeah, why? why? And he goes, "If they showed you what they showed me, you wouldn't tell anybody either." I didn't That's see what that. Trump said. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Trump said to that judge. Um, if I think there's there's only one reason to hide it. it the CIA killed Kennedy. You know shit. There's only one reason. And probably not just the CIA. Probably the mob. Probably a bunch of people. Probably. A lot of motive. A lot of motive. The, a lot of people wanted him gone. They they were they did not like him in Dallas when he came to Dallas the, like Dallas was a red state in a red city in a red state and they did not like him he wasn't liked by everybody this idea that he's liked by everybody that's now that he's murdered yeah right everybody loves you after you get murdered right and if uh, can you imagine if Obama got murdered how much they would love him now oh my God right, we were yeah. looking back if we were looking at Trump and then Biden this fucking bumbling old dead man yeah we'd look back at the days when our president was like well spoken and. <laughs> We'd be so pumped. It's this a is a silly man. place. We live in a silly place. It's the silliest place. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't. That's a crazy thing. I didn't know he said that. Like, I, I, I I'm gonna go find that clip. That's what he said. Um, and that doesn't that read? Doesn't that register? Like, it has to be something that's so egregious that you would realize. Like, this would throw the whole country into disarray. We would completely lose trust in. What I think we, is necessary, I think the CIA is necessary. I just think they're out of control. I think the FBI is necessary. I just think you're not supposed to fucking do Who's some in of charge, the shit. Man? Who, who, how many people did you have in the fucking ground on January 6th? Tell us that. No, I, think, I can't. But I think for legitimate crimes and like dangerous fucking terrorists, that shit's important because sleeper cells are fucking real. Like they knew that something was going down in Russia and they tried to tell them, they tried to warn them. Stay away from any Who mass knew? gatherings. The United States, the, the the United States intelligence agencies were aware that something was going down in Russia. Yeah, I'm sure they, they were warned aware. Them, I'm sure they, they were, warned them. Yeah, they did. I'm sure that's what that was. But listen, the point is that can serve a function. You do need some sort like like this guy from the CIA was on Schultz's podcast. And yeah, I don't he, like that guy. Wait, his hair? What is it? He's the cool CIA guy. For, okay, I'm glad you said the hair. 
All uh, right away, I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, the yeah, You're he the looks cool like guy? he's from old school. He's the, the he's the Dominican kid from old school, the young one with that same hair and the fucking. But I'm watching yeah. him on uh, Lex. Well, I think it was Lex. Lex first. Friedman. Yeah, it was Lex first. Yeah. Um, and he go and he goes, yeah, you know, they all tell you this great story of how they look for people who are sociopaths. And, and he goes, they don't like me to say this, but I feel more comfortable around gangsters and something. And I'm like, so here's, I'm naive, as I said. And I go, well, I know why they don't want you to say that, because it sounds like you're a criminal like a gangster. The, but that's mm. not why. It's so he looks cool for the kids because they're recruiting. It's recruiting season all the time. Mm. It's the, ooh, I'm a cool Grand Theft Auto, and look at my dumb fucking hair. That's uh, what the fuck that is. I don't know why. Uh, you, so, you got mad. Look at you. Because... That thing of warning them, dude, the spin of, the, of that story. Let First, me get to what I'm saying. Yeah. So what he was saying was there's sleeper cells mm -hmm. in, like, Chinese communities. And um, yeah. one of the – I forget which guy on Schultz's show brought that up. And he asked him, and then he was like, yes, it's true. And they're like, what? He's right? This is real? And that Chinese nationals will embed themselves in these, like – expat cultures these well, they, well, they're not expats they're 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 it's a chi what, what is it called when you have a they explained it on the podcast what's it called when you have a culture that is essentially they only speak chinese they hang out with only chinese people they're in a chinese village that's inside of a city alt right there's a, there's a term for it but there's a term for that and he was saying that in that like we would do that if there was something like that that existed in a foreign country of course we would do that we yeah. embed our intelligence agents into that country it's yeah. a responsibility that's the only way you find out what the fuck is going on so of course china's doing that oh you don't think they're coming at us with a balloons they're doing that too i don't believe for two seconds that i that think they're doing that too i at think all. they're doing that right well the crazy one was i don't believe it at all drones did you hear about the drones at the bases that were happening for weeks no the, what did, I, did i send it to you the other day jamie do you have it you want me to send it to you again um this is something uh melissa chen sent me uh, there is apparently a fucking shit ton of drones that were uh, hanging around this base for weeks, and they didn't know who was. Look at this. Mysterious drones swarmed Langley Air Force Base for weeks, dude, weeks. The unidentified drones were such an issue that assets were called in from uh, around the government, including a NASA WB-57 high-altitude jet. Mm. So they're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. If we're at some weird stage where they start implementing these things that we've been calling UFOs, that maybe at least some of them are controlled by someone that's a human being. <laughs> I think many of them are. Yeah, but if they're that level where they can just like buzz around Air Force bases and no one can catch them and no one can stop them and no one knows what the fuck they are. Um, first of all, you know, Raytheon is a weapons company that's in Antarctica. Um, they're just to make concern for science. Yes, they're just concerned for science. <laughs> Listen, this is a neutrino detector, which is really important. As yeah. someone who loves science and talking to scientists, I support Raytheon's desire to not just create weapons, but also do well for humanity. Touche, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and I support their getting young women into STEM fields. Yes. I and support trans that. Trans women. And uh, I caught Rachel Maddow's uh, speaking engagement there about <laughs> how we need to shovel money into Ukraine, and uh, I accept and believe it. And that's right, Ukraine, what mm. a conspiracy to say that wasn't going to work out. What a crazy conspiracy <laughs> to say they haven't been winning, they would be better off, they would have more. If we didn't do fucking anything, they'd be way better off than they are now, which is fucked. Dude, I want to do a reality show with Conor McGregor and Zelensky just doing coke together in a mansion. <laughs> Zelensky's going to try to fuck Conor. It's going to not work out. <laughs> Zelensky's going to try to suck his dick. It's going to be, he'll hit him. Hey, oh, he'll kill him. Dude, <sighs> uh, just one little thing, like, the Haiti shit, like... The, is like a lot of people say, if you bring up anything with Haiti, like, oh, this conspiracy, that's the saddest fucking shit in the world, dude. There's no conspiracy about it. It's all shit. It's fucking crazy. That's what, again, don't tell me how bad Putin is after what you guys did to fucking Haiti the whole time. Well, they were so mad at, um, at Tucker for going and talking to Putin and making him a human. People were so mad. Okay. Well, shouldn't you, at least, if you want to decipher what they're saying, mm -hmm. shouldn't you at least listen to what the enemy supposed enemy whatever it is the leader of this country that's invading ukraine has to say shouldn't you want to listen to what he has to say even yes. if what he's saying is a lie you should be able to have experts 
analyze what he's saying and say this is not factual That's this right. is this is the true reason why he attacked the uh the nato in, in cru- intrusion into specified areas that they had forbidden that's not true and here's how we can show but they don't true. want that at- they, but yeah but they don't want to hear what he has to say okay so here i'll be the fucking dipshit from Please. cnn or whatever um yeah but a qual a qualified person should middleman this information and do like you know how we want twitter to censor more not some jerk like tucker carlson it should be christian amanpour yes and then Someone it gets filtered color. oh that that's a great nice point one. yes yeah. i'm sorry that's a number don lemon should be the one talking to yes. him and then they and should they go should. over it before you see what putin had to say don't give him a platform Can you imagine don't platform him you imagine sending don lemon to talk to putin i was thinking about it uh, that would i'm into it be Wonderful. If Elon's listening, Elon. Could you imagine if Don Lemon could talk to Putin in Russian so he could badger him the way no, he badgered, badgered Elon? <laughs> I can't imagine Russian. <laughs> I can imagine him doing the same interview he did with Elon Musk yes. to Putin. Exactly. And I, I would love to see that. Well, if they did it over Google Translate so that they could do it like, <laughs> so they, like a, when them Samsung World phones, phones <laughs> so they could translate it. You know, have you seen those Samsung phones that translated no. instantaneously? The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is this fucking amazing new phone that has AI built into it that allows you to translate things in real time. So if you have Galaxy earbuds in and you're listening to someone talk in German, it will translate it into English in your fucking ear in real time. And it also translate on an app where one side of the screen, the screen's cut in half, one side of the screen's facing you, the other side's facing me. You speak to me in Farsi, it, it, it translates it to English in, in writing. And then I speak in English and it translates it into Farsi. Question, is it uh, better than Google Translate's job of translating other languages? I think it's a little more sophisticated because it's built into the phone. And it's it's built. It's oh. an AI feature that's built into the oh. operating system. It's like they're the first company. Samsung and this phone in particular is the first company to not just use AI for photos because it uses AI for photos as well, but it also uses AI to make uh, like a synopsis of a website. So if you go to a uh, website and you say, "Give me a summary of what this website is saying," it'll break it down in bullet points for you. Break oh. the web, and it will do that with your notes. So if you have notes, so you write a bunch of crazy shit in Samsung Notes. My manifesto? Say, exactly. <laughs> or your set list. And you say, hey, uh, br- summarize this. It'll summarize it. It'll break it into paragraphs, parts that, that, that fit together, and things that make sense. Oh, I'm curious so to try it now. They're, what I'm, my point is they're getting to a point where Don Lemon really could have a fucking conversation with Putin in real time. If they could do that Russian to English, English to Russian, and as long as there's someone there that stops World War Three, <laughs> as long as there's someone there that like, like duh, 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 no, they misinterpreted that word. That word means this, which means the opposite of that. It's a, you know, it fucked up. The AI didn't catch it right. The last translation I tried to read was, um, trans- that's why I bring it up, is uh, of course, now, here's my number one conspiracy I'm emotionally attached to is uh, President Macron's wife is a trans That's woman. my favorite. I have to pee. Let's come back and talk about that. I get pee too. Yeah. That's my favorite. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Maybe he can become white. <laughs> Sammy Sosa is becoming white. No one cares. I thought he achieved it. He's basically more white than I am. That's uh, I used to have the whole bit about penis whitening about Sammy Sosa. Did, and he, he, he's penis whitening. Yeah, they do it by laser. <laughs> do they really? <laughs> In Thailand, it was like <laughs> they lighten your penis. I, I hope it's not as big as it used to. Yeah, Jesus move Christ. over, asshole whitening. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that seems. They heard that's the best part of being white, the dick of it, and they were like, they want it. <laughs> the they do it by laser, dude. The great white will. <laughs> Everybody wants a Moby Dick. The great white will. Uh, oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Big old That's not it. <laughs> white yeti dick. <laughs> Imagine if like one of the blackest dick porn stars with those giant fourteen inch dicks. If one of those guys just decided to just whiten it up, whiten up the whole dick. You know what that would be like? A fourteen inch dick white would be crazy. If he did that, <laughs> okay. It would. Yes, it would be. Uh, who's that singer that she lost weight and everybody got really mad at her like she betrayed Adele. Fabio? It would be like the turning of uh, turning yeah. on Adele. <laughs> Like you whiten a fourteen inch dick on Black History Month? <laughs> you how dare you? How dare you? 
How dare you? That would be like a. Cr- I, I bet you'd be a lot of backlash if I'm like, no, I just think it looks better. The and Sammy I- Sosa thing is wild. Um, he just looks so good when he's, his skin was darker. Like I don't understand. He looks so weird now. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, you so, know who looks good? Macron's wife. <laughs> yes, that's what we're talking about. So, so this story, even if. Macron's wife. This is why Candace Owens was fired. Candace Owens alleges that Macron's wife is somehow or another a biological man who transitioned at age 30 mm-hmm. to become a woman, even if that's not true. Macron's wife was 39. No, older. When he was 15. I think that's the age. And he was probably 14, not 15, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to make it. Look so remember better. Mary Kay Letourneau and the and the Hawaiian kid mm-hmm. or the Samoan kid? And yeah. I, like I found a picture of them. Like so, imagine that story, right, right? Where she went to prison, you know, for rape, right? And then came out and married him, and they had three kids and right. got a divorce. Imagine if instead of that, they ruled France. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it ended up, right? And now but that's yeah. the less crazy of the story. Well, it's not, but yes, but that's in the less optically crazy. somehow. But it's the less crazy because the crazy version of the story is that it's actually a man. That's the unacceptable part. <laughs> that's that's the part where they're going to sue. How dare you say that our underage <laughs> fucking <laughs> right. rape marriage that is the president and first lady of France? Right. Don't don't add crazy shit to this. Yeah. <laughs> don't make don't make her trans. Like, you asshole. I, this is the part that I love about the uh, clown world Armageddon happening is um, the priorities are so cocked up in everyone's head because of changing markets, I guess. I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> and the Antarctica beam. <laughs> the, the clown beam in Antarctica that has clearly been turned on is Eric is suited. That is, dude, that's the first thing when I heard it. I'm like, wait, that's, that's the least batshit part of the story <laughs> is that there's a trans first lady is... Uh, oh, the most, ba- but it's crazy because it's been hidden for so long. But the right. most batshit part is uh, evidently true, which is yeah, she was thirty nine and he was fifteen. Her, if, if it's if we're being okay, fair, th- the age changes. Okay, look at this. <clears throat> okay, here it goes. Forty. It was at least. In the after school drama club of La C. How do you say La C. La Provence. That she and Emmanuel Macron first met. She was in charge of the after school theater club that he attended when he was 15, <laughs> alongside her daughter Lawrence, who was in his class. Cool. Their relationship has attracted controversy as she is his senior by close to 25 years. And Macron described her as a love often clandestine, often hidden, misunderstood by many before imposing itself. Oh, that's a very French way to talk about it. Well, well, go back to that. Don't go away. Look how crazy that statement is. A love often clandestine, often hidden, misunderstood by many before imposing itself. Like you were getting molested. In 89, <laughs> that's exactly what that is. Yeah, he's Dennis Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, this is so crazy. In 89, Br- Bridget Macron, uh, then with her, what, however you say her maiden name, uh, as Ozier, Unsuccessfully ran for a seat in the city council of uh, Trachtersheim. Trachtersheim. It was the only time she ran for office in 2017. Bridget Macron, Macron played an active role in her husband's presidential campaign. A top advisor was quoted as saying that her presence is essential for him during this campaign. Uh, Emmanuel Macron stated upon his winning of the French presidency, his wife would have the role that she always had with him. She will not be hidden. Not why good translating. You, why would you hide your wife? Uh, yeah, why would you? He proposed creating an official first lady title as the spouse of the French president currently holds no official title, coming with her own staff, office, and a personally allocated budget for their activities. Following Macron's election as president and his previously outspoken stance against nepotism, a petition against his proposal was gathered more than uh, 270. 5,000 signatures, and the French government announced that Brigitte Macron would not hold the office title of First Lady and would not be allocated an official budget. So they pushed back. So the just the real facts of 39, 15, often clandestine, often hidden, but eventually imposing itself. Like, what? She's f- married with three kids and raped a student. Yeah. And f- now here's the thing. Did the three kids come from her penis? 
or the, the three kids come from her vagina. This is what. So if they didn't come from her penis, that means that she gave birth to them, which makes sense. But if they came from her penis, if this is what Candace is saying, who gave birth to those kids? Um, if those are her kids, she was the father of the kids, and uh, the woman. Uh, I, I don't but even is know the that. Whole... Where's the mom? So there, that should be easiest. Like, this is the actual mom. This is the person that you were married to and you had kids with before you became a woman. That should be a person you could find. I, that's, I have not heard that, though. There's one So if picture, you're saying that okay. she's definitely a man. No, I'm, oh, oh, no, I'm not saying oh, you are. But oh. if someone is saying that, <laughs> I'm not saying you are. You, I know you have a, don't have a dog in this fight. But if someone is saying that Macron is actually a man, yeah. that you have to, like, who, if she has kids... And these are her kids. Mm -hmm. So you have to find who had the fucking kids with her. That's if right. You're saying she's a man. That's a, a big woman, question. Where'd the woman go? She vanished. She should still be alive. If Macron's alive, the woman she had kids with probably also alive. The kids know that that's not their mom. What are we doing? Okay. No. Look. All, <laughs> those are all valid questions. Yeah. <laughs> but so. She, I can't find the video anymore on YouTube. She had a link to the, this is how we got on this topic was that there's a link to the, all the compiled evidence over the years. Okay. And but where's the woman that made the babies? Well, they were like, where's the husband that she had? They were like, they can't, they, there's one picture got released. They sued about it, but there were no pictures of her for the first 30 years, except as right, a young Right, but she's figure. 70. There's not a lot of pictures of me and I'm 56. From your first 30 years of life? There's a few. But until cell phones came, well, I was also on television, right? So I was also a comedian. So there's more pictures and photos and videos of me than would be normally with most people. Like, but the pictures of me from the time I was young, there's only like a fucking handful you of You know them. what? I guess wealthy French people didn't take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, you, like, but it's also, it's like a different time. She's 70 years old. Like they had to do a photograph, like oh, oh, stand oh. there. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean it's like there's not a lot of photos. You know, and they weren't digitally. Uh, if they weren't, like people say, where's the photos of Michelle Obama pregnant? Like probably in her fucking photo album. Like, yeah. What like, is what? what, what, what a, why would she put them online? That's a crazy one to bring up. But that. that's another one. That yeah. that one was like the first ridiculous one, the yeah. big Mike one. Which yeah. led to this Macron one, which seems no, to have no, way no, 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 more no, no, legs. No, going around the Macron for one, a yes. Few years. yes. Yes. The Macron's older. I, one yeah. um, okay, I should say in this country. I haven't heard about it. I haven't heard. In France, they've been talking about it since how long? A long time. Quite a few years. How many years? At least three. There's, there's been lawsuits. There's been all sorts of Yeah, things. it's. it's so, it didn't just start like last month or anything. Well, then Big Mike was going on a long time ago, too, though. <clears throat> I didn't say it wasn't. But you said this was going on before Big Mike. I said it. You said this was new. I, after I Big did Mike. the misinformation oh, yeah. of but that. But I think Big Mike was probably first, though, no? Wasn't that? Like, didn't people, like, listen. I'd never heard Joan it. Rivers said that Michelle Obama was a man before she died. When was that was a joke? That? I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke, too, but the way she said it wasn't, like, jokey. She was like, walk, oh, come on, everybody knows Michelle Obama's a man. Like, Remember that? Yeah, like, would Big Mike kill you for that? <laughs> well, I think she died because she had a thousand plastic surgeries. But <laughs> Yeah, she was going under. Yeah, she just sees these big black arms coming over face. <laughs> Bro. Big Mike. Bro. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoever did Madonna's face was working on Joan Rivers first and perfecting yeah. the craft. The face killer. The, <laughs> he got it. He'll, he'll if get you. you. Go to, see, see if you can find Joan Rivers saying yeah, Michelle yeah. Obama's a man, the video. No, I don't, my darling. I would, just hold it, mister. I was given a boarding pass with the wrong name on it. I went through five different security passes, and then a woman at the gate who will not look at my passport, who will not call Continental, who will not call for help, who will not recheck into their records, uh, d says to me, you cannot go on? No. She is a moron. What? What? That had nothing to do with that, Jamie. Look what the title says. I know, it's on but, but but that's not it. Um, if you <laughs> what go is to happening? It, that's not that's the wrong video. It's absolutely the wrong uh, video. Why would they? But label hold it? on, Jamie, Jamie. There's a video of her and she's yeah. walking into I her apartment building. Right here, I just was okay. Playing the one that that's it. This like is the, the one. one. Or the first woman president. We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know, Michelle is a tramp. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's a what? 
Transgender. We all know. It. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's pretty funny how she said it. Okay, we all know it. So what year was that, Jamie, that she said that? Uh, I have no idea. Well, let's see if we can find that. Uh, okay. Well, um, how soon before she died did she say it? Well, I don't And Boeing is a terrible airline. <laughs> it's a terrible company. <laughs> Zelensky's a coke does coke. <laughs> uh, and Israel's com committing genocide. Well, all the, all the, um, you know, all the questions you said right at the top about like, so where's the woman? There's a lot of math of like for this to work out. Well, let's ask but they this. Make it this look is how good. we can find out when. When did she die? 2014. Okay. So it was 2014. So it was 2014 that she did that. Where she yeah, in 2014, so it had to be before 2014 because she was dead in 2014. So 2014 or before, she said Michelle Obama is a man. So this is like m 10 years. Have you ever ago. heard that before her? I d I never heard it. No, I didn't. I didn't even hear her say that until years later after she was dead. The Obama being gay thing was an, uh, really shocked me because uh, you know that that that's the thing because back in the day he was a Muslim. And not from America, so the idea that like he was secretly gay is so like what like, but you saw I got it, the guy's yeah, book. But you about, know yeah. that Muslims, particularly like in Afghanistan, there's like those clean shaven boys that they pass oh, around. Yeah, yeah the so dancing they, boys of Afghanistan they, with the bells. They yeah. do gay stuff. So no. what does that mean? He's a hardcore Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Taliban. <laughs> But okay. that guy that Tucker had on his show was that was so fucking bananas that he decided to do that. Have that the guy Taliban? on the guy that said he sucked Obama's dick oh, on what? Tucker's show. That I, dude, I took Obama, I took the crack money from him, then I sucked his dick, and I sucked his yeah. dick again. Like what? Yeah, it was. Uh, what are you doing? Pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> he was a young Obama. He gets. It sounds like a hot, like a uh, porn of like I was in town. Yeah. I go. You know a guy? They go. Yeah, that I know this college student. Hi, I'm a young Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do whatever, man. <laughs> well, wasn't he like a senator at the time or something like that? What was this guy claiming? Was he a law student? What was he claiming? I. It, it was some less something funny to laugh at. The only thing that's like a real undisputed thing was. That news that came out, because Mike McRae, who lives down here and does a good Obama impression, he called in and it had come out in the, his biography. This is by some liberal college professor. He, I, There's like a paperback of it or something where it's letters to his girlfriend he used to be with. He used to be like this white girl in college, I guess. Yeah. And so these letters are like, I have sex all the time with men in my mind because I'm trying not. You didn't see that news? Yeah, okay. I did see that. So there's a funny joke McCray had is doing him. He goes, hey, look, I was trying to bang girl with pink hair to an art suit. That's what you got to tell him. Yeah. You want bang girl nose ring? You got to say, think about gay sex in your head. So well, I laughed at the time, but then I think about it, I'm like, I would ne Who the fuck would write that? Was he trying to break up with her? And <laughs> <laughs> this is how he tried to let her down this before. Is, I'm really into guys in my head. Like, take the hint. Or, yeah, dude. but dude, that's a crazy. And then, so here's what happens, because the thing becomes hard to find. So the stuff we were saying, what, what I was saying was, yeah, it's all crazy thing they're saying, but they've done such crazy things to counteract it yeah. that it makes you go, wait, is something that, you didn't think anything was there, right? But then the way they react, you're like, wait, did you do something? Like, right, it, right. You could make it. Tom Cruise, remember when he sued because people said he was gay? And did he, he sue? Up, you don't remember that? It made him no. look really... He's not gay, by the way. It made him look really gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what? Hulk Hogan, when his uh, wife said he was gay mm. with Brutus the Barber Beefcake, yeah. Hulk said, if I was gay, I'd celebrate it. It went away. And he was dressed like, like he's clearly gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I would celebrate it. And it, oh, okay. So, like, if you react to it in a way like that, and, you know, there's all these, like, old, rich, old money rich families that are unaccustomed... To like anything less than full PBS respect, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, uh, and so they they don't know how to react. And they're from it's like the old school way of dealing with problems. That thing you said about being seventy, I didn't even consider that, dude. That's a great point. How do seventy year olds deal with scandal compared to now? How you would deal with it? Yeah. And it's like the the same techniques of covering up a UFO, <laughs> like they have to use to yeah. cover up their weird thing. Well, this scandal yeah. is first of all, it's real simple. No matter what, even if you're just a woman, you're a pedophile. Even if you're just a woman. Well, so that's one. You're a Number two is very easy to find out if you're a woman. We do 
a chromosome test. I think that like in Crocodile Dundee, he just grabbed the chair. <laughs> oh, who knows what's going on down there? But very easy. We can extract some DNA and we can find out if you're a man or a woman. Yeah. That's very easy. Yeah. Now, if you have- I'd take less evidence even. XY chromosome, you're a fucking guy. Here we go with the conspiracies. <laughs> oh, this is your conspiracy talk now. If you if you could prove that, that would be the wildest thing. Like well, what Candace Owens tried to do. Do you think that's what got her fired? No, I say that as a joke, but it was some. I mean, it has shit. to be a pile on um, of multiple sort of offenses. Yes, I think that's I think that's what it is. But uh, I, here, so pedophiles, just for the record, they I don't. don't I shouldn't oh. say it has to be. Because that's not true. Do you remember when they tried to put pedophilia in the psychology book as an orientation? Yes. And, it, and so at the time, I had no idea what, like, well, was it like you're gay for kids, right? That's what I was thinking. And uh, Neil Brennan told me, who's dating some psychologist, says, no, because gay would be you would marry, you want to get married and be with the person, prob you know what I mean? Like right. the thing of gay, an ori orientation, not gay, excuse me. Orientation is you want to have your, like, toothbrush with their toothbrush, ultimately. And with... Uh, pedophiles once you get older you they don't want you no more so if they're still together all this time that's true love and not pedophilia but it is rape <laughs> but yeah. it was, well i don't even know if it is it's it's not pedophilia anymore people go it's france my girlfriend well it's france have you ever heard that yeah it's france what we should examine france well, is that why they give kids wine well that's where fucking what's his face went over when there was wanted for rape uh with the director roman polanski that's yes. where he's from. Yeah, he went over there, and they're like, no, we keep him. He is one of ours. Because they get it. Yeah. <laughs> this is normal. This is normal. The home of postmodernism. This is normal. 13 is normal. Yeah, you are so uptight with your... USA with its problem. Yeah, it's just like, even if at the end of the day, he uh, d did marry his teacher who was a woman, it's still bonkers. That's more bonkers than it's the whole thing's bonkers. And but the really bonkers thing is like if this person has kids and they're a man, actually, and they had kids before they transition, where the fuck is the woman that had the babies? Dude, I was laughing before because I thought you were saying the kids might have came out of his dick hole. I swear <laughs> to God, that's, I misunderstood what you were saying. I was like, it's hilarious. Like, the, but there has to be a woman. There has to be a mom, and then there, there's the kids. No, the there kid, doesn't. The kids, you have to pull the kids aside. Where, who's your mom? Why are you a Who's your fucking mom? Where'd your mom go? <laughs> what happened? Okay, that's your mom, definitely. Are you we were all? from the beginning. Okay, we're good. We're all Michael Jackson now? Yeah. We're, we're like, it's a mystery who the mom, where Can this came? Can cheek swab from you, ma'am? <laughs> I just would like to find out for sure because I'm rooting for you to be a man because yeah, it just makes I, it I, I would support this more more so crazy and so bonkers. I'm rooting for it. France, do you know? You ever see the old interview? Like Brian Volke, his comic told me about it. I never in the night. What is that stuff? It's a CBD bomb. I got a, a tight muscle in my oh. lower back. You ever use this shit? I th no, I thought you had a rash. I was like, what's no, it? no, no. This is uh, CBD MD. This is. Uh, it's really good stuff. Oh, it's yeah? CBD that you put on your uh, muscles, and it, it like significantly relaxes your muscles. Oh, and it's right? a roll-on, so you can kind of like dig it into the muscle. It no, loosens I'm... things up. Yeah, you were. I was like, is I, should I hit that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, not going to do anything for you. I don't you. think you should share those. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the Macron thing. What were we saying? I forgot because I was thinking about that. That roll on, that roll on. Yeah, the, the even if it's just what it is. But yeah. when Candace Owens had that oh. whole show about it, I was like, "You." Stake? She said, "I will stake my reputation and my job." At daily. Yeah. Um. Oh, my fuck. professional reputation. Oh, Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah. So Brian reminds me. He, I remember in the '90s in an interview in like I want to say Vanity Fair. He just said when he was younger, he raped a, and he's like really young, like. Nine or something. He goes, yeah, that's when I did my first rape. What, dude? Put really? it in the, okay, so that's how I reacted. I was like, come on, and I looked up, and sure enough, I don't remember. I think he was in a movie called My Father the Hero, which was a Disney movie at that point. Really? Yeah. That, yeah. That movie is oh, like a whole weird movie. But. Oh, it resurfaced, is what happened. In 1978 interview, Depardieu reportedly confirmed a story that he first participated in a rape when he was nine years old, and he had participated in more rapes since then. It was France. We had too much wine. What? Is France just, like, super rapey? 
uh, rapier. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Yeah, it, it's just like such a... By the way, France is the country that uh, Haiti had to pay reparations to for not being <laughs> slaves yeah. until, until like 1985 yeah. through Chase Bank. Yeah. What? Yeah, Chase is the media. Is that great? By Chase the time that the won't 80s do business. Rolled around, they go, this is a thing called the computer. I think we should get out now. You wouldn't let him. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be ugly for us. <laughs> Okay, let's pull out of this reparation. Well, France couldn't take that to arbitration because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it seems like they're getting fucked. But there's no... that Some makes back dues. Dude, that's the craziest thing in the world that... Because you always hear, like, it comes up... Like in L.A., Gavin New, American Psycho hair here, he's like... Yeah. Well, we're gonna do slave reparations just in California for, like, some crazy... And people get mad. Have you seen what they've done in Boston today? Um, Another no the, white the heads party. Of this bla these black churches want fifteen billion dollars in reparations from the white churches to the black churches. Noise. <laughs> and they're out there. Yes, we, and this should be paid as follows. I mean, like five billion dollars at first, an upfront payment, and then another five billion. And like they've got it mapped out that they're they're actually demanding fifteen billion dollars. From these white churches. Right. Like, what's the angle? What hey, what's the angle, guys? What are you talking about? But all, what, all what the, it's, are you it's all it's all like nonsense. Who gets the money? Yeah, like, it's, but it's, it's all, so yeah. crazy. It's like, to get you to fucking give a shit. Uh, uh, every petty stupid. So the reparations. That's what I say to people. Fight about that. Not not that. That's cr absolutely bad shit. What you just told me. Yeah. But when people when people talk about <laughs> slave reparations, they talk about like, first of all, you, do you think that that would be the the real tragedy of our government spending would be on that we gave like 300 billion dollars probably to ukraine so for that amount of money not only could you pay slave reparations to the wrong people they could be half people that just got here and nothing to do with it you'd have enough left over to pay all the white people that feel bad about reparations they could have a reparations <laughs> and you'd have plenty of money for other shit and like so then every time somebody argues about oh what is the morals like yo dude we give all our money to go kill other people. You, we could have a candy land of moron shit here for years if they didn't do that. Yeah. I feel like an idiot even like, but we can't do it. But Not I don't know. That, that money came out of nowhere. Like where was they all They have a magic money? machine. <laughs> do you not get out of the world? Antarctica cloud beam, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, were, we were talking about the, the UFO thing. Oh, um, you had sent me a video of a UFO thing that I sent to Jeremy Corbell, and he says it's bullshit. Which one? The one where the the plane gets circled by the drones. Oh, okay. So, like, I know I know that video went around, but I was listening to that autistic man talking about <laughs> the ins and outs of how they looked at it. Yeah. Um. Uh. uh so you know, if you go on the like rabbit hole shit of of uh, all this stuff, you know, like you know, and the, you know, I do. So you know uh, uh, how uh, who's the guy Jack Parsons that that was a the father of rocketry in America or something they call him and he's the guy that blew up from fulminated mercury. L. L Ron Hubbard stayed at his house and he was like they're trying to bring about Babylon rising. Babylon spelled wrong by the way, but, which is that Aleister Crowley Thelema kind of bullshit. Mm -hmm. And um, dude, it makes me laugh so much every time I think about it. all the history of rockets, these dick shaped objects that we shoot up, they. Okay, one part of rocket science is all the stuff I can't do, right? The other part of it is going in the desert and jerking off and looking into L. Ron Hubbard's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 like the also, key component. Also, the rocketry in this country is connected to two things that are evil, Nazis and Satanism. Yeah, well, if you think it's evil to jerk off and look in the eyes of L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> are you an ingrate for rock? But it makes me laugh. So it's all this weird magical so shit. Is, yeah. yeah. So um, it's all this weird magical shit. And uh, it's so closely. So now, when you they talk about the, they don't go. You this weird debate. Like I don't think it's ETs. It's extra dimensional, something. And there's a lot of religious kind of channels that are like, obviously these are the Nephilim from the Bible, all that bullshit. And um, I don't think. Uh, uh, See that thing, yeah. that boom is actually um, that's, from a video game. That's from a video game. No, it's not. It doesn't match up. That's it does, what they... But it does match up. It does match up except for some parts of it where it looks like it's partially altered. But 
obviously, if you're going, like, there's a video that breaks it down, how it matches up. Not only does it match up, the edges, like, match up precisely at certain points of it. It looks like an altered version of that image that's like a stock footage of some kind of explosion. And right. you're doing it through filters, and you're adjusting the way the image hey. looks. But a visual effects yeah. guy went over it. And he explained multiple reasons why he thinks it's fake. Well, that's a good Someone point. Someone who's an actual expert. But you should know that a visual effects guy, expert, also went over if CNN discolored your face. And he said they didn't. Come on. You think Did I'm they really? We did but it was a Jimmy. CNN hired guy. Who the right? f- that's, here's the point. Yeah. You th- like, you can't trust that now. Like, they're going to do you personally. And then you're going to go, well, this expert, like, I won't say I know or don't know on a thing, but the way I, I look at it- I think that video is bullshit. It could be. Because there's a lot of those but videos look, that are bullshit. That's the point. As soon as the questions around a thing that's not solved, we're like, well, wait, what is this? Mm-hmm. And there's some weirdness. Hey, maybe someone put that out as disinformation. There's that. Why are- Like, if if there's nothing and they've been doing this, it's just they want to make us think they have UFOs. Okay, that's possible. Totally. That is- crazier <laughs> than if they just found something the government to create a george lucas level lore of aliens in the popular consciousness for no reason other than to like hide what you have nicer shit that flies mm-hmm. that's insane that's fucking like hiding that your wife is a man and you're the president of france it's that level insane sort of why would but you trust your anything about your country ever again if they did that to you? Well, because it's military secrets, and they've always hidden military secrets. Yeah, they, they hid all the military secrets about the the stealth bombers. They they, yeah. they hid a bunch of military. And secrets. you know what? A lot of, a lot of good has come out of that. They hid the actual existence of Area Fifty One. No, I know. Yeah. Why would I? So now that I know they're lying every fucking time, and then if I'm lucky, in twenty years I'll be allowed to know, or the president will. Will go. I looked it over, and and uh, you wouldn't put it out there either. I think I would put it out there, but you know, I w- I probably shouldn't be president. But that that's the thing. Like, uh, who said this? I can't remember who. It's not my quote, but the nation is as sick as its secrets, and that's yeah. how si- whatever's in there is how sick sick fuck of a country it is. Right. If it if it's so if, sick that it's actual aliens that are visiting us and they're using human beings as like yeah. vessels for souls. And I don't buy any of the stories of like, do you remember Men in Black with Will, the great Will Smith? The great Will Smith. And the opening. I call him Slappy. You're mean. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, okay, so the. the Slappy Smith. The, narr- the narration with uh, Tommy, we're, we're them. We're the ones that handle the things. So you can live your stupid fucking moron peasant life. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. It takes a great seat to handle the information. Only someone that we tested as great as Will Smith could even handle the knowledge of knowing the truth. And he's doing helping you out by keeping You're it a about secret. A movie, right? But what's the message of the fucking movie? All the movies, the message is, yeah, we need to have these people that lie because it's too big of a truth. Yeah, that's what they always no, say. You need to lie, motherfucker. You Whoa. need to, for your power thing to work, Jeez. you need to, uh, not you. So that, no, they don't have to lie. It's, all, it's always bullshit. They don't have to lie. The only thing they have to lie about is they want to keep the business going. And it's never been for your good that they lied. It's for the, the good of the people who fucked up before so they don't get in trouble. Right. And they sell it to you like it's your fucking problem. Damn, Kurt, you sound like an old man on a porch. I, that was my goal Matt, in life. <laughs> I, I embrace it. Mad about the government. Yeah. No, I'm not mad about it's, it. I'm one, mad about people not two, being uh, knowing about it. One of two things is real. Either... It is ours, and they're awesome at keeping secrets, much to our dismay. Or it's someone else from another planet, and they're also awesome at keeping secrets, which is even kind of crazier. Both things are pretty crazy. If they can really keep under wraps the fact that we have been visited forever by extraterrestrial beings, that's pretty nuts. And if it's not, and it's just a, a con story that they're running to try to mask some sort of a secret propulsions program that's been going on since the 1980s, that's pretty crazy. Well, let too. me ask you this. Um, think of the stunning amount of time they've been able to keep this secret that um, maybe women don't have dicks. That, the things that they keep secret are so insane. Like, of course they can keep a secret. You know how you keep a secret? Roy, Roy Cohn, the great Roy Cohn, showed us how to keep a secret. You know, two can keep a, three can keep a secret if two are dead. The old, the old saying. Right. No, 
Three can keep a secret if each of the three guys agrees to stick his dick into something he shouldn't stick it in on camera, and they each have that blackmail on each other, and then you can keep all kinds of secrets for a very long time. Now you're talking. So what do we do to make sure that people keep secrets? We have them suck a dick with a skull mask on. Do frat we put them in yeah. a tutu? Yeah. yeah a, Film yeah. it, right? Dude, why do frats... The, the things you've heard about of like Ookie Cookie or all that shit, Big mm-hmm. J knew all the names of all of them. And you're like, wait, why did you have to do that to join? Like, I went to an honor school. They didn't have frats. But, oh, I know why. It's trickled down from the upper classes of weird shit to your ass to also, go to Oxford. That's how you pick a president. Yeah, no shit. You don't want a president that doesn't have any fucking footage of him sucking a dick with a clown mask on. I won't accept it. Then you're never going to be able to trust that guy. What if he goes rogue? What if he goes JFK on yeah. you? What if he crumbles under the weight of the hideous things he knows and yeah. gets the bright idea of snitching? Exactly. I want to encourage snitching. On What's great about right now, this is the other reason I'm not like unhappy, even though I'm continuously like, are you kidding? About every, every single new thing. I'm like, oh, so nothing I've ever heard was right. Right. <laughs> like, okay. Right. It sounds great. Uh, I love watching at every level it's collapsing. And you, you don't have to do anything except be a disgruntled enough employee to be like, fuck it. I'm saying it. I don't care. So now the P. Diddy thing, which like for two years, I would tell people is hilarious. I mean, it's horrific, but it's also hilarious that it was like the big secret that P. Diddy would make a bunch of these guys suck his dick and do weird shit. <laughs> oh, do you think the government does it? Well, P. Diddy does it. <sighs> Homes in L.A. and okay. Miami raided by federal agents. Dude, the, wow. the conspiracies of P. Diddy are like, you know that as above, so below, that like uh, magical shit the rocket scientists say when they jerk off and look in each other's eyes? What? <laughs> I was, uh, Duncan will know. As above. <laughs> hey, d- ask Duncan. But as above, so below, you've heard that saying? Yes. I want to write a hermetic magic book called uh, As the Carpet, So the Drapes <laughs> by... Kermis Metstriginos with all my occult knowledge that I picked up mm. from looking into UFOs. Uh, they, like, y- these things are like reflections all the way up. So, like, at every level of society, there's something colla- like Vince McMahon went down, right, his empire. Shit somebody. Yeah, I've given out Canadian top hats and chicks. <laughs> at every level, there's something. I, I want to joke about it on stage, but people like. You know, nobody follows all the same things anymore, so it's hard to... The things I want to make references about, there's, like, no common culture anymore of, like, we all saw this, so you got to just burn time explaining the first part of the story. And uh, with Vince McMahon, dude, I'll ask, does anybody know, like, people that know, know, <laughs> like, what he did? Right. Or what it's claimed that he did? It only came out because he didn't want to pay her the full money. If if he were paid $3 million to do all horrific things, and you're like, yeah, I'll do that, then... I'd be like, well, that's not assault. But this fucker didn't want to pay because he has a history of fucking people on shit. And all he had to do was pay what he agreed to. And she's a disgruntled employee and good for her because that guy shit on her. (laughs) They're having a three. They don't say what position, I don't think. I hope it's Eiffel Tower and not a blowjob he did this during. Uh, Two on one with, I'm guessing, Johnny Leonidas. I don't know. Another executive. So they're both they're both having sex with this girl. This man gets up, shits on her head, and then he goes, I'm going to go get, you guys finish up, I'm going to get a shower. This is what's written in the legal, he defecates, they say he defecates, okay? Yeah, you're get, we'll finish up, Vince. I think we're all, I think we're okay. all done here, Vince. Should we strong, I think we're done. Should we steal man his position? <laughs> <laughs> and should we say, he's an elderly gentleman involved in rigorous activities, and oftentimes they lose control of their bowels. Is the reason why depends is uh, associated steel, with old people. Well, that's a Listen, fair. If I was his lawyer, I would say Vince is a wonderful man who respects women, but he's got bad bowels. Well, uh, and- uh, Jim, uh, 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 Joe, that's a great steel man, and but I would just say respectfully the part where he goes, "I'm in a shower, you yeah. guys finish up." Mm. Right there is where I break with the idea. That he just lost control. Well, he didn't want the party to be over just because he can't control his bowers. It seems very considerate of him. You okay. guys finish up. I'm going to shower. I'm sorry. Yeah, you I get a shower. in the party. You go get a 30-minute shower, Vince. I'll sit here with this chick. Imagine having sex with someone with someone else's shit on their hair while you're having sex. No, like, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, like, it's a party sex, foul, for sure. smelling <laughs> this guy's shit? Like, yeah, literally that... where your face is? But I'll finish up. Oh. Well, hey, miss, uh, you want hey, to finish up? You with the... That's so insane. 
<laughs> you with the the Stone Cold Steamer that you got? <laughs> oh, maybe we'll just chat about nicknames. There's nothing for this crazier. depraved act that you just did. Than the depravity of shitting on people exactly with feces. Okay, this is it. Uh, oh my one example God. of McMahon's extreme depravity. May 9, 2020, he defecated on Miss Grant during a threesome and then commanded her to continue pleasuring his friend with feces in her hair and running down her back while McMahon went to the bathroom. Wait, to I didn't see this off. part. Wait, wait, I didn't see this part. Upon his return from the bathroom, McMahon and his friend actively resumed the three. She didn't get in and hose off? You showered Whoa. and went back and started the girl Whoa. whose head and back you shit on. Whoa. So, Why get a shower? Oh my god, so she didn't shower? It says right here remained covered in his filth. He oh got showered and she god. stayed Oh my god. With uh Bob like Saget's closer on I her head. I also like how they just described it as his filth. His filth. I mean, is that like is this like a legal document? Like, is that a legal term like his filth? <laughs> He gave her a Polish car wash and he goes and cleans himself. What the fuck, man? Um, yeah, well, that's that. So the P. Diddy thing. Yeah. The disgruntled employees have been coming out years ago on uh, the whole mafia has a podcast now, by the way. You, you might have seen. Everybody has, sn and, and you, people will get in, invested in it. It's so much yeah, better the, than the mob has podcasts now. All, and they have rivalries. And there, there's like people that are like, oh, well, I heard he's a snitch. Like they're now, like, do you have Stockholm Syndrome? Good, they're a snitch. That's why we have this great show. <laughs> the fuck, are, I hope everyone snitches. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, so I get criminals. He has a right to say as a fucking criminal, don't snitch. You, the citizen of the good country, <laughs> you're supposed, Edward Snow is not supposed to be hiding out in Russia with mm -hmm. the bad man. Right. He's the guy that did the right thing, right? No. Some of us, we, you, we kill snitches. But like, what is it? <laughs> but it's all falling apart. So uh, the P. Diddy quote is my, it's uh, Jaguar Wright said this, an uh, ex-employee of him. He goes, if you can get a man to suck your dick, you can do anything. As in a man that just does not want to do that. <sighs> yeah, that's a real, it's like a, a affirmation. It's like a real affirma power affirmation for someone. But you, we know that people can get depraved enough to shit on people. That's real. I mean, that's so called we, a Dubai porta potty. And that's what Instagram models do for we, fifty grand a pop. We know people are depraved enough to try to get straight guys to suck their dick. We've all heard of it. That's pretty light. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna ask me if I want to suck your dick. <laughs> just that's just straight stuff, dude. <laughs> normal, normal shit. Dude, no just one hanging laugh. around, being bros. No one. I'm not. People don't really laugh at this joke, but uh, I was like in the future, you know, like. You know, gay conversion therapy they used to do. Which, yeah, which pray is the like, gay away. Yeah, yeah, with, with, we, with hard ons like hugging you from behind. Yeah, for like your parents pay like thirty grand to go mm -hmm. to some weird. You know, in the yeah. future, you're gonna pay that money. The conversion, you're gonna you're gonna send your kid to a camp, so they can talk him down to just being gay. You, oh, right. You're right. like, hey, he's a. He told me he's a diaper. He has a fursana. Could you just tell him he's gay? And he's a cat. And he, he wants a litter box. He thinks he's a cat. <laughs> they want a litter. Oh, so the covering up of the litter box thing. Do you see that principle at play of like, don't even talk about it. Yeah. Because it's the same principle as if you talk about John Stewart putting a medal on a Nazi or Canada applauding a real Nazi, it helps Putin, the bad man. So cover up the fact <laughs> that the Canadian House of Commons gave a standing ovation to a real World War II Nazi. Why, by the way, why is he hiding out in Canada? That's been allowed. Oh, but Project isn't it funny? Like yeah. the way people realized what he was saying when he was saying that he fought Russia. Yeah, we, my girlfriend went to Jacksonville Public Schools, and she picked it out. <laughs> She's the one who said something first. She says, "Wait, would that mean the with the Nazis?" <laughs> like we all learned that just like from Call of Duty games, just a few years, like not that long ago. Isn't that insane? That fighting against the Russians, you can say it as a positive thing now, even if you did it while you were a Nazi. You can say it like they're communists still. You, they act like they're the Soviets. He want, dude, if you say this, anyone who's, if you see him on TV and they go, Putin wants to rebuild the Soviet empire. Now, if you're just some Joe Schmo saying that to me, okay, you, you just don't know nothing. That's, you're right as an American. People in charge saying that stupid fucking shit that he wants to rebuild it. You are a fucking, either a liar or you're a fucking chump. You're probably like a, you know, an innocent chump like Chris Cuomo or some shit. But that's, 
Domino theory. You're still selling domino theory to people? The Vietnam, remember Vietnam, that thing that we lost? Yes. <laughs> and they're doing great. Communism has never worked. Well, Vietnam won, and also it's a great vacation spot. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't believe in communism, okay? I thought it doesn't work. So why are you spending everybody's money to go make a thing that doesn't work, not work? That seems like a waste to me. That's our entire first half. Now it's uh, Russia. We want to weaken Russia. A friend of mine said this to me, who's a comic. He goes, but isn't it good? <laughs> We're weakening Russia. Oh, the guy with the hair that you brought up, that CIA guy. He was listening to reasons. This is great. We get to, we have old weapons we weren't using. We get to use those on the battlefield and see how it'll be for our coming war with China, of course. Uh, we, they want to fight. Lindsey Graham, Miss Lindsey Graham's like, they want to fight to the last man. <laughs> oh my. That's a great impression. Yeah, it's easy. Little, oh, they want to, this is the best money we ever spent. There is something really crazy about watching that guy. Roy drum, beat Beat the drums of war. Well, he's been doing it my before. Like my whole life. But when he says it like in an aggressive way, there's the, when he makes statements in an aggressive mm -hmm. way, it's like it's very bizarre. He's a good actor. But it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre to like listen to it in his voice. Yeah, well, that's a different. We're just a gentleman down here. It's make not any. It doesn't pay. mean any. You don't have to do a conspiracy theory about we me. Are, we, <laughs> are gonna, we are going to make them pay. I'm like, what? Down, they will fight to the last man. Okay, so here's How our, is that inspiring? Joe, you, 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 you just said the thing. What, so they're saying this like the CIA, he's going like this is a great idea. So we want Russia. They're our enemy. So we got these crash test dummies that we're going to just grind them into hamburger. Isn't that good? And use our old weapons we weren't using and creating jobs. Isn't that good? No, that's uh, despicable. That's lower than any shit I've ever heard about another country that we want to have a war with another country. We're oh, not a secret. Openly bragging about it. We're going to get these other people who can't win, and they're not winning, by the way, and just kill off most of their pop, all their able-bodied people, average age 50 of their soldiers. The average age of their soldiers is 50. You aware of that? In Ukraine? Yeah. How many soldiers have died? I don't know. I don't know for sure, but it's at least half a million if you include people that can never do anything again, that are just injured, you know, the wounded and shit. The numbers they tell you are always lie. They're the same shit they did with Iraq and Afghanistan. No, it's it's working. You know, we just got to keep putting a little more money into like a drunk. We just got to keep putting more money into it. Ukraine has lost a half a million people. Able body, yeah. Well, the the deaths are probably that hot. You know, you got to you got to do Carlito's way method with yeah. the numbers they give you. Right. So they tells you it's fifty thousand. It's probably hundred thousand. Right. Sasso. <laughs> Yeah. You got to look at it like that because they're everything's a fucking lie that the people that you're supposed to believe say. Bro. So now, what the fuck, man? Yeah. So now, mm. now, uh, you know, our our first wife, our main wife, Israel, needs us. So our side, our side piece, Ukraine. Hey, Zelensky, we had, it was a great while it lasted, man. It's time to, you know, it's getting weird now. Yeah. Like he's gonna say he's pregnant. That's his last move. But America, you, it's, I'm pregnant. It's yours. That's all he's got left. <laughs> Uh, I'm pregnant with a war. Okay. Here's the order of, of nations that the I care about. The average age yeah. is 50. You haven't heard this? I have heard this. Did you see the video of the sad old men that look older than I'm, me? I'm, I'm realizing now that I did hear something about it. And there was also, they were talking about how they stop people from trying to escape to make them fight. There's a $300 rubber mask that looks like from the movie Drive that you can get to look old so they don't grab you and put you in a fucking van. Oh my God. And, oh, they're, oh, they're taking everybody, by the way. Women, they're putting in forcibly. Oh, so Jesus. they've lost, so, so they lost, that's the truth. Why don't we just kill another fucking amount of them until, by the way, Russia's not weak. They're, they're doing better. <laughs> I feel like Wolf Blitzer, but, but you made Russia weak, right? Like, we can't confirm that. <laughs> in fact, we didn't. When Tucker went there and showed the subway, I can't, this is where John Stewart, well, he says something great, like on a Colbert, uh, Colbert show, mm -hmm. about clearly we, we, COVID we, came from a lab. Yeah. We work with them again, by the way, for the record. And then he fucking does this. He goes, well, that's the price of freedom. You have the National Guard in your subway, and it looks like shit. And you're saying, oh, the, we're so free here. <laughs> that's why our subway, that's why nothing is run correctly. That, he's smarter than that, that dude. That's fucking shitty. Well, it's also, it's echo chamber thinking. 
you know, and you find ways to support what the echo chamber has sort of established stop as doing the that. narrative. Yeah, stop doing that. You don't have to fight nobody. You don't have to march. Yeah. Just stop doing that, everybody, doing at that. once. It'll it'll end the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a real problem, and it's also a problem that's being used to manipulate people, to Whoa. think one way or another. You know, they'll they'll use that yeah. and manipulate you with that. Just comment. You know a lot of times I'll look at some con- like a kooky conspiracy thing. Like uh, I was reading about, um, what is it? Monarch, the one that's like after ultra. And it was making me laugh because the thing they're saying is like these, the scientists have kids in these cages and they, they shock one cage and they go, I love you. And they don't shock one. And they go, I love you not. And shock the other one to make them a, fr- it's a, like a mind control conspiracy. But while I'm reading it, I was laughing because it just sounded like a metaphor for our actual entire society. <laughs> Like, I don't know if that shit's real. Mm. I'm sure it could be, but I don't know. But when you read it, it sounds like a metaphor for all of society. The I loves you. Remember you had Cat Williams talking about the homeless people seeing uh, all these illegals getting cards, mo- yeah. cards with money? Yeah. That's a great point he made. Like, homeless people, you're laying on the ground watching people that aren't from here getting, getting. Uh, that's yeah. that sums it up right there, you know? It, it really is like, at every level, there's this fucking... Uh, just like a scam, and you're supposed to buy into every well, every yeah. level, every level. The home, the homeless people thing is a great example. Just the poor people in America realizing that these people are getting ten thousand dollars a month. That whole fucking thing that they were trying to do, and with Eric Adams and in, in New York, that all you know, you, you you'd get an ATM card and you get like a certain amount of money. Do you have a debunking card. of that? Can I just debunk that Please. real quick? Yeah. The debunkings are worse than the, they go, no, you, you guys, it's not, listen, I know you're a, an alt-right conservative guy, Joe, and, uh, and you're making it, but you have to understand, it's actually cheaper. See, they were actually giving them way, like, they're spending more giving them money before this. The card is just to be, to streamline it, and it'll actually be cheaper in the, you were giving them more money before this, <laughs> and that's your debunking? <laughs> How that, much do they get? No, no, it's only enough when you add up all the family members, Joe. Now, see, you're getting conspiratorial again. Like, it's just is, enough to buy food amount. and diapers and things that, you know, people from here need. If they all get $10,000, is that real? That seems so insane. Did I move to when Alaska the from on Maui oil month? got $700 a one time, the people in Hawaii in You Maui? know how many kids are missing still? Did they ever find those missing kids, the thousands of them? I don't or know. did Oprah find a buyer? I don't know. I yeah, they know. didn't do nothing for them people. But these they're people, gonna be baffled they don't vote for Biden. They're gonna these, be baffled. Imagine if these people are get, literally getting ten thousand dollar checks and the people in Maui got seven hundred bucks. You don't have to okay. imagine that's what happened. Right. That's what I'm getting to. Like this is the world that we're living in. This is how upside down everything is. And people that want to pretend that anything makes sense, whether it's on the left or the right, people that want to pretend that any oh, this of this makes sense. You're all out of your fucking mind. A family of four is expected to receive up to $350 per week under the program, which will last six weeks, city officials said. The program would begin with 10 families on Monday, expanding to about 115 families or roughly 450 people over the next week. Wasn't there something about keeping $10,000 in an, in a, an account on an ATM card? So you what that was about. I'll bet you the numbers. But it was, he was connected somehow. The mayor was supposedly connected yeah, somehow uh, to it. It's New York, of course. The... All the, the everything's corrupt at every level. It's yeah. not a little bit. It's the whole thing. You're, uh, you're uh, bumming me out, Kurt. Let well, me, I like that. This up. Oh, yeah. What you is, got one more time. One more thing. Yeah, it's about Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> no, Danny Shaw. You should look up if you want to know. It's it's like really upsetting, and uh, because now the people, the what I'm seeing on the channels that I like to, you know, where they they're I'm more conservative. The like, great now these Haitians are gonna come in. It's like. The reason all these people are rushing in, and it's intentional, it's 100% intentional, all these NGOs and shit, they, and the corporations want to flood with immigrants, it lowers wages, they need, the military needs soldiers, we've done this many times throughout history, you saw gangs in New York, right, mm-hmm. the Irish, Yeah. okay, um, <laughs> they want a, 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 it's all military age men being brought in to completely like, uh, uh, Fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm so goddamn. Well, you would eliminate re- legitimate patriotism. Because if you got people that come from other countries, then you arm them and have them go against the people that were here originally. Dick Durbin saying on C SPAN that this, that's what we're doing. This says the 10,000 number, but I don't know where they get the. Uh, oh, it's just as up to. From. It would give migrants up to $10,000 each. 
each in taxpayer money with no ID check, no restrictions, and no fraud control. So that means yeah. they get ten thousand dollars. So I don't, the, I don't know where they got that. This $10, maybe $10, that is from. like the limit for the three hundred fifty bucks. That's, like when it gets thing to says here that it's a thousand dollar up to a thousand dollars each month. So maybe it's like at the end of ten thousand dollars they cut you off. But also the from what I've heard, maybe it's not true that debit card can only be used at particular places. Yeah, for <clears> for the things that cost things. the most in society now, like well, eggs for and people shit. that have a business connection to the the company that's issuing the money, that way they can get all the money. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fucking. So look, so that's crazy. crazy. That's one hundred percent crazy. So that's your Democrat side, but the people doing that flooding in, besides the ones that the government and uh, these companies put it on purpose. We fucked their country up, and the people on top know that. We that's how we got like remember uh, uh, cocaine cowboys, mm -hmm. with, like the Cuban, the Mariel boat lift, and all. Well, there's waves of this, and it's because we went somewhere, and we they have shit that we want, and we take it. You know, like Hitler did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we go, hey Haiti, it's pretty fucked up. Hey, you're not slaves. I hope first you're paying France back. Number one. <laughs> Yeah, you're paying them back into the '80s for the not being slaves, and we're and they have lots of natural resources. All those uh, iridium, like uh, rare earth minerals, we need for our electric uh, EV initiatives around the world. Their sweatshops. Uh, you thought it was all Uyghurs? No, we make Haitians do it. We've invaded for them wanting like 37 cents more to make Levi's. We've invaded them like four times. We're about to have Kenya invade them for us. How we do at Ukraine? The crash dummy method, because it doesn't look good for us to invade while we're yelling at all these invasions Putin did. We're doing worse to Haiti than anything he did to Ukraine on any level. That's a fucking fact. But uh, Danny Shaw, if you want a good source, that's the guy. Okay. Let's wrap this up. Kurt, you're the man. Dude, that... Uh, I, I Last fucking, time was uh, fun, too. I laughed so... That, that you you that, send me down a road, though, dude. When, when well, I, I have to deal you. with this, so why shouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a well, woman, you, by the way. When you started going to Jimmy Dore show, like you, you immediately like became. Once you too, see it, yeah. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You, right. It's horrible. It's, I don't recommend um, it. I don't recommend it. The end. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, brother. That was fun. Thanks, man. That was fun.